Have you ever seen something incredible being constructed? Where the boundaries of what's possible are being pushed way beyond your imagination, and where astonishing innovations created by humanity are introduced. Today we will go over the absolute biggest mega projects around the world, going from deep underwater in the ocean to far above the clouds where nobody has gone before. Make sure to stay around so you can witness the insane list of construction marvels that we have put together. Starting with number one, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Welcome to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or JIRD, an engineering marvel that isn't just a dam but a beacon of a nation's aspiration and unyielding perseverance. We're talking about a dam that engulfs 74 billion cubic meters of water, creating an artificial lake of epic proportions. JIRD, with its staggering figures, propels itself into the global spotlight, with a reservoir spanning an impressive 1,874 square kilometers. That's an expanse greater than the entire city of Los Angeles, all being harnessed to empower and electrify a nation thirsty for progress. This powerhouse is set to churn out 6,000 megawatts of electricity, enough to light up multiple cities and potentially transform Ethiopia into a significant power exporter in Africa. For context, that is more than double the energy produced by Hoover Dam in the USA. Despite its original construction goal set for 2022, the timeline of JIRD's completion continues to be postponed for now. Number 2. Varosha, Cyprus Varosha was once a resort located in the city of Famagusta, Cyprus. The resort had skyscraping hotels, and the beaches were often referred to as the best in the country. It was home to around 39,000 residents and hosted 700,000 annual visitors and tourists. The locals absolutely loved the place until the following happened in 1974. Turkey decided to invade Cyprus and they gained control of the resort. Tens of thousands of locals and tourists left the place immediately, hoping to return as soon as possible. But unfortunately, they never got to return. Since the Turkish military fenced and blocked off the entire resort, it has now been abandoned for decades and it's currently part of the Turkish Republic in northern Cyprus. Number 3. Arena da Amazonia, Manaus In 2014, Brazil hosted the Football World Cup. To make this happen, they had to build a total of 12 brand new football stadiums and also renovate some older ones. One of these football stadiums was the Arena da Amazonia, located in Manaus. This arena took a total of four years to build, and the cost was an estimate of $250 million. Now here's where it gets interesting. The location of the stadium was in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, which meant that building it wasn't going to be an easy task. Although Manaus is Brazil's seventh largest city, moving large amounts of goods to this location was very difficult. A lot of the materials used for the stadium were being shipped from Portugal, and that journey takes about three weeks. This ramped up the costs of the mega project very quickly, but this is only where the problems begin for the arena. After investing all this capital into the construction of the stadium, only four World Cup matches actually took place at the Arena da Amazonia. This obviously meant almost no capital was generated to compensate for the cost of building the stadium. And after these four matches took place, it was rarely used. The local football clubs in Manaus couldn't fill out the entire stadium simply because the clubs weren't big enough. Sometimes the stadium does get used, like for a few rounds during the 2016 Olympic Games, but that's about it. Nowadays, the stadium rarely hosts any events, leaving the stadium to be completely useless. Number 4. The Boston Big Dig Boston Big Dig is a mega project that rerouted the highway through the heart of Boston. It was approved in 1987 to replace the outdated Central Artery Road, which could only handle 75,000 vehicles per day. However, over twice as many cars were using the road every single day, causing delays of over 10 hours. To solve the issue, a plan was made to build an eight-lane underground highway that would run up to five miles under the city of Boston. Construction of the Big Dig started in 1991 and should have originally been finished seven years afterwards. The location of the Big Dig is very close to the Boston Harbor and that came with some environmental concerns. The authorities failed to get the right environmental permits for this until 1994. On top of that, it was a real challenge to avoid two subway tunnels very close to the Big Dig. The construction workers even ran into foundations of buried houses, and they also made some archaeological discoveries dating back to the pre-revolutionary era. 
Because of this, the planned cost of $2.8 billion completely skyrocketed past its budget. Nine years after it was supposed to be completed, the Big Dig was ready for traffic in 2007. It was estimated that the project would end up costing $22 billion, and that this huge sum of money wouldn't be paid off until 2038. But the project did work because the traffic situation improved drastically. Now it can handle over 250,000 vehicles every day, ensuring a smoother flow of traffic and easier city access. However, Boston still faces some major traffic problems. It is argued that the project has only shifted these issues to other parts of the city. Hamad International Airport, Qatar Hamad International Airport is located in Qatar, and it's named after the previous emir of Qatar, Hamad bin Khalifa. Construction on the airport started in 2005, covering an area of 5,500 acres. It was originally scheduled to open in 2008, but after a series of delays, it eventually opened to the public on April 30, 2014. It quickly established itself as the best in the Middle East and has surely challenged other global aviation hubs to improve. In 2021 and 2022, the airport won the award for being the world's best airport, beating the seven-year streak Singapore's Changji Airport had. The architecture inside the airport is beautiful, featuring ripple wave ceilings and a lot of expensive material in its design. The interior of the airport is as nice as it can get, and it has an endless list of luxury facilities in the building. For example, it features a wellness center with a swimming pool that looks over the main departure hall. A gym, squash courts, and numerous extremely expensive art pieces are shown off throughout the airport. The airport also has its own mosque, designed to resemble a drop of water. The most well-known art piece at the airport is the Lamp Bear, and it comes at a price point of $6.8 million. The total cost of constructing this airport is estimated to be $16 billion, finishing at a few billion dollars over budget. Niam, Saudi Arabia Imagine a futuristic city sprawled across an area 33 times the size of New York City. Welcome to Niam, Saudi Arabia's flagship venture towards establishing a high-tech, fully automated, car-free gigacity along the Red Sea coast. With a budget of a whopping $500 billion, Niam isn't just a city, but a colossal complex comprising 10 distinct regions. What sets Niam apart is its audacious goal to operate entirely on renewable energy while preserving 95% of its natural environment. This mega-project aims to become a regional powerhouse in water production and storage, boasting one of the world's largest international airports, ready before 2030. Venturing deeper into Niam, its construction isn't without controversies. Critics argue that the city's ambitious vision may face stiff resistance from traditional societal norms prevalent in Saudi Arabia. Moreover, the massive financial investment raises questions about economic viability and return on investment amidst global economic uncertainties. However, the proponents see Niam as a bold step towards diversifying Saudi Arabia's oil-dependent economy. They believe this megacity could be a hub for international investment, attracting top talent and businesses from around the globe. Lerdal Tunnel, Norway The journey of constructing this tunnel began in 1995 and reached completion in 2000. With a budget allocation of around $113.1 million, this engineering marvel surpassed its Swiss rival, the Sint Gothard Tunnel, by 8 kilometers, establishing a significant milestone in the realm of tunnel engineering. Stretching a total of 15.5 miles, the budget was meticulously utilized to address the challenging geological and environmental conditions encountered during the construction phase. One of the standout features of the Lerdal Tunnel is its user-centric design. The tunnel is segmented into sections, each basking in a unique lighting scheme designed to mitigate driver fatigue. Ragun Dam, Tajikistan It's time to travel to Tajikistan next. Here, atop the powerful currents of the Vakish River, the Ragun Dam is being meticulously forged to cultivate a whopping 10.3 billion cubic meters of water. 
A sea of water embanked, ready to become a potent catalyst for generating a staggering 3,600 megawatts of electricity, enough to power over 2.5 million homes annually based on average consumption rates. The raw gun dam, soaring to scrape the skies at a monumental height of 335 meters, is far from just a feat of engineering. It's an emblem of towering ambition set amidst the rugged landscapes of Tajikistan. Your thoughts may linger on the cost of manifesting such a grandiose vision. Well, engraved in every inch of the dam is a piece of its remarkable $3.9 billion investment. This isn't just capital, it's a financial testament to a nation's dedication to uplift its energy potentials and secure a stable electric future for generations to cascade through time. Peering into its operational horizon, the Rodgun Dam aims to unleash its full might by 2028, showcasing not merely as a reservoir of physical power, but as an embodiment of the intricate dance between targeted investment, environmental calculus, and engineered precision. Gigantic Paris Replica of China It's well known that China has many replicas of cities around the globe. They have fake Venice, a fake White House, and also a fake London like Thames City. So it may not seem as weird to have a Paris replica as well, but the city never gained any popularity. In 2007, a town named Tian Ducheng, located about three hours west of Shanghai, started constructing a miniature city that looks exactly like Paris. It was meant for a population of 10,000 people and it came with everything you would imagine inside an imposter Paris. A 300-foot tall Eiffel Tower, gray Parisian facades, cobblestone streets and many fountains. The town looks quite nice and you would imagine people from China would love to live here, but the opposite was true. Although all of the other replicas mentioned earlier were an instant hit among the population, this wasn't a hit at all. The Paris replica remains empty not because Paris isn't popular, but because of its location. Tian Ducheng's developers constructed the city in the middle of nowhere, completely cut off from urban connections or any form of public transport. This means the only way to get to the city is by car. The only people that travel to the town nowadays are urban DK tourists and the occasional wedding couple that wants to take pictures in front of the fake Eiffel Tower. However, the developers of the town think hope isn't lost entirely just yet. The plan is to build many more new cities close to where Tian Ducheng is located, meaning the connectivity to the location would improve massively. If and when this is actually going to happen is currently unknown, but maybe in the future, the Paris of the East will become popular. Zainyun International Project, China This project is located in China's Hebei province, in the city Shijiazhuang. The project consists of two parts, a small commercial area with shopping malls and skyscrapers, and a big residential area with apartments. The total cost of the project is about $3 billion. The location is pretty ideal since it's located right next to a train stop and very close to underground subway services. When the Xiangzhong International Project was announced, 700 apartments were sold right away. But in 2014, the construction of the entire project was stopped because the real estate company in charge of the project was under investigation by the authorities. Charges of corruption were made against the main developer of the project, and these charges were found to be correct. So he got locked up in jail. Shortly after these events, the prices of all properties within the project saw a decline in price, and eventually, the company declared bankruptcy. Currently, thousands of people have not been able to move in because the project was confiscated by the government. What remains of the project is now an absolute ghost town. There is still traffic on the highway close by, but inside the buildings, it feels completely abandoned. Jiangzhuang International Project is now more of a tourist attraction, especially for content creators who find the area stunning and want to share it with their audiences. No news has come out about the project resuming anytime soon, and it looks like it may never be finished. Honshu Shikoku Bridge, Japan Japan is one of the best connected countries across the globe, mainly because of its incredibly fast and efficient rail network. But because Japan is largely made up of islands, it's not possible to easily reach every place in the country by train. During the 90s, there was an idea to connect the islands of Honshu and Shikoku. These two islands had previously only been accessible by ferry, So the Honshu Shikoku Bridge project was designed to give it a road connection as well and make it more accessible this way. It would become the largest and most expensive construction project in Japanese history. It involved building three expressways across a network of 18 bridges, 
also designed to welcome pedestrians, cyclists, and trains. Most of the structures are suspension bridges and were completed between 1998 and 1999. At the time of construction, the project cost $48 billion, which adjusted for inflation is $75 billion today. Based on studies following the construction of the bridge, the project has been a great success for the economy in Japan, while also making everyday lives much easier for people who live on the islands. Halain, Saudi Arabia Nestled within Ni'am is an engineering marvel known as the Line. Challenging traditional urban development, the line is designed around people, not roads. It's just 200 meters wide and it stretches over a remarkable 170 kilometers, featuring two mirrored horizontal skyscrapers. The line isn't just a construction project, it's a reimagining of urban living, expecting to provide a home for 9 million people by 2045, where every facility is within a five minute walk. Digging deeper into the line, the city's design is a direct challenge to traditional urban development, and with that comes its share of controversies. Critics argue that the absence of streets may not be a practical solution, and question the feasibility of the high-speed transit system. The reliance on renewable energy, while commendable, also faces scrutiny regarding its capability to support such a large-scale urban development. However, many see the line as a blueprint for future cities. The pedestrian-centric design is hailed as a forward-thinking approach to urban living, potentially reducing traffic congestion, pollution, and fostering closer community interactions. Hurrika Dam, India The Hurrika Dam, nestled across the Mahanadi River, traces back to the era post-India's hard-won independence, when the seeds of industrialization were being sowed. The cornerstone of this monumental project was laid by the first Prime Minister of the fledgling nation, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, on April 12, 1948. The dam not only regulates the flow of the Mahanadi River but significantly contributes to power generation through several hydroelectric plants. It stands as a bulwark against the floods during the rainy season, while its reservoir irrigates over 46,000 square miles of fertile land nurturing the agrarian landscape of the region. The Mazandar Committee was entrusted with the monumental task of ensuring the technical soundness and the feasibility of the project. Initially, the committee had pegged the cost at nearly $1.3 billion, envisioning the completion of the dam by June 1955. However, the 27-kilometer-long dam was completed by 1953, a significant two years ahead of schedule. Yet, the full functionality of the dam, embodying power generation and agricultural irrigation, was realized only by 1966. H2S Railway Project, United Kingdom Countries around the globe are now realizing how important it is to install high-speed rail networks. The United Kingdom also realized this, and that's why they are constructing the most expensive mega-project in Europe to date, the High Speed 2 Railway. There has been a long concern in the country about the imbalance of investment that goes towards London and the surrounding regions of the United Kingdom. HS2 is a project that will help to address that. The first stage is a high-speed rail network link between London and Birmingham, which is expected to be completed by 2031. The second phase of the mega-project will see the line being extended to Manchester and Leeds by 2040. The issue with the High Speed 2, however, and why very many British people have anything but good to say about it, is the quickly rising costs of the mega-project together with a number of delays. Phase 1 of the project should have already been near completion, but at the moment of making this video, it's over a decade away. The cost of the mega-project has more than tripled during construction to a total of $128 billion. Adding on top of all these issues, there's much more. Countless homes along the railway route had to be destroyed, leaving people to be even more upset with the construction of HS2. I think you now begin to understand why there are so many people questioning the construction of this railway. A lot of people are saying it's a much better idea to invest all of the budgets for the railway project elsewhere, such as to improve the connected cities themselves. Beijing Daxing International Airport, China In 2008, the plan for this airport was to make it a brand new main airport of Beijing. 
replacing the Capital International Airport, which handled 83 million passengers in 2013. The new airport was planned to handle 120 to 200 million passengers a year, running at full capacity, which would make it the world's busiest airport by passenger traffic. In construction plans for the airport, it was stated that it would consist of seven runways, six for civilian usage and one for military purposes. The construction took a total of almost five years, opening in September 2019. Unlike typical airport designs, Daxing resembles a starfish form, inspired by traditional Chinese aesthetics. Experts say that the airport will be handling 75 million passengers a year by 2025. The cost of constructing the airport was estimated to be $11.2 billion. But if you've been watching this channel for longer, you know that almost every mega project crosses its own budget. It ended up costing a total of $17 billion, $5.8 billion more than the estimated cost. The airport covers an area of over 1,400 square kilometers or 868 square miles. But why would Beijing need another huge airport next to the Beijing Capital Airport that already handles 85 million passengers a year? The city of Beijing has seen a massive surge in air traffic growth for the past couple years, and because of this, the Capital International Airport has become overcrowded since 2016. This airport exceeded the 100 million passenger mark in 2018, while it was built to handle 85 million passengers a year. To take away a lot of stress from the Capital Airport, Daxing Airport became the brand new central hub of Beijing. Trojanut Saudi Arabia. It's time to venture further into another large mega project called Trojana, an emerging jewel nestled within the rugged terrains of Neom's crowd, situated in the zenith of the kingdom's towering mountain range. Trojana is on a brisk journey to etch its name as the pioneering outdoor ski resort in the Gulf. The masterminds behind Trojana harbor a robust ambition, a vision articulated in numbers, 10,000 job opportunities, a thriving community of 7,000 residents, and the magnetic allure to draw 700,000 visitors by the year 2030. The landscape of Trojana is an exquisite canvas, featuring wellness resorts that promise serenity, retail outlets offering a slice of modernity, and a giant ski village. For those who find solace in the frosty embrace of winter, Trojana extends a playground of endless adventures, simultaneously emerging as a powerhouse for employment generation within the region. Yet, the road to realizing Trojana's grand vision is not laid with roses, but rather it's a path intertwined with formidable challenges. The mountainous embrace, while offering a scenic backdrop, unfolds a series of engineering and construction conundrums. The audacious idea of carving out a ski resort in a land known for its desert expanse has spurred skepticism, especially concerning its environmental footprint and the voracious water demands such an endeavor entails. Despite the cloud of skepticism, a chorus of supporters vociferously argue in favor of Trojana's unique geographical positioning. They envisage a scenario where Trojana serves as Saudi Arabia's golden ticket to foray into the bustling global winter sports market. With every snowflake that descends upon Trojana's slopes, the promise of attracting a global congregation of winter sport aficionados grows, potentially catalyzing a vibrant influx of tourism. Dunyang Kunshan Grand Bridge, China The Dunyang Kunshan Grand Bridge, part of the Beijing Shanghai High Speed Railway, began its construction journey in 2006 and reached completion in 2010. This colossal project emerged as a significant milestone in bridging engineering, with a budget of $8.5 billion. If we would translate this price tag to cost per mile, it would come out at around $51 million for each mile, making it the third most expensive bridge in the world. Situated between Shanghai and Nanjing in Jiangsu province, this grand viaduct forms a crucial link in the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway. By bridging the geographical expanse, it also bridges the socio-economic divide, fostering enhanced accessibility and connectivity between the urban and rural landscapes of China. 
The engineering and construction of the bridge were monumental tasks, since the bridge traverses a complex terrain filled with rivers, lakes, and rice paddies, requiring meticulous planning and engineering acumen to ensure its structural integrity and durability over time. The process involved extensive geotechnical investigations to understand the soil and subsoil conditions, essential for designing a foundation capable of withstanding the load of the bridge and the dynamic forces induced by high-speed trains. The bridge spans an impressive 102 miles, requiring the erection of about 2,000 piers and the use of 450,000 tons of steel. Brand in Goddam, Congo Next on the list, it's time for the Grand Ngadam, stationed along the bountiful spine of the Congo River in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is envisioned to be the beacon of hydroelectric potential, surpassing every existing power station on the globe in both scale and output. Dive deeper, and the statistics are nothing short of staggering. The Grand Ngadam is poised to have a capacity of an astronomical 40,000 megawatts. It eclipses the Three Gorges Dam in China, the world's current largest power station, by potentially doubling its electricity output. But the true essence of the Grand Inga doesn't just lie in its Herculean capacity. It's slated to illuminate a pathway that would potentially electrify the African continent, connecting the electric pulse from its southern tip all the way through to its northern extremities. However, interwoven within the layers of its engineering ambition lies a tapestry of challenges, particularly when nurturing and protecting the delicate ecological and socio-economic balance of the Congo River Basin. The dam, with initial phases originally planned for completion in 2025, has seen its timeline cascade into 2030 and beyond, embracing not just the mechanical and logistical challenges, but also the ethical, environmental, and social dimensions that each delay introduces. Yucca Mountain Waste Repository, United States Its next location is used as a storage facility for nuclear waste and other high-level radioactive waste. It was constructed to deal with a very sensitive issue that was known around the globe. If nuclear waste is not stored properly, it can be deadlier than anything humanity has ever experienced. This was a problem because most countries couldn't figure out where to store it properly. In the 1980s, the United States tried to find a permanent solution to this ever-growing nuclear waste issue. The Yucca Mountain in Nevada was identified as the best location for this mega project. On paper, this seems like a perfect location, but the people of Nevada were furious. Their argument was that the location isn't suitable at all, because it's close to a nearby water source used by millions of Americans. Despite this setback, they resumed construction in 2002, but doing this was a big mistake since the opposition only grew stronger because of this. For them, the only reason this was happening in Nevada seemed to be its low population and a small political saying in the matter. By the time Barack Obama became president, the entire project was very political, and in 2010, the Obama administration stopped funding the Waste Repository project. Construction completely shut down, and the project became unworkable. Three years later, a federal court ordered the project to be resumed, but there has been very little progress ever since. Right now, it's not part of the country's plans anymore, so construction may never continue again. The total cost of the project is over $17 billion. And because the project remains unused until this day, the Yucca Mountain Waste Repository is completely useless. Forest City, Malaysia Forest City is an integrated residential development and private town located in Malaysia. The idea of the city was first announced in 2006 as a collaboration between the Malaysian and Chinese governments. If it all goes to plan, it's hoped to be completed by 2035. Constructed near Singapore to take advantage of strong connections with the city-state, the forest city will be made out of four artificial islands that cover an area of around 6.5 square miles. The concept of forest city is to bring residential and commercial buildings together in a way that's respectful to nature. Each building is designed to be covered in living gardens to almost give the impression that it's a natural environment. The cost is estimated to be $100 billion, but it's still in progress, so the final cost is unclear. So far, the progress of constructing Forest City has been slow like with any other mega project on this list, mainly due to the fact that the location was a former swamp. Because of this, it's far more difficult to create stable islands and stable skyscrapers. 
While these problems seem to be solved now, it did cause major delays to the construction of the city in Malaysia. As of right now, 15,000 residential units have already been bought, with some of them already being in use. This is far less than the 700,000 that the authorities had hoped to sell by now. However, they still have an extremely long way to go until the city is complete. And there is very little doubt that such a unique place will go unnoticed by people looking for a new city to live in. It will for sure gain a lot of attention by the time construction is finished. Changi International Airport, Singapore In 1981, the Changi Airport opened replacing the single runway Paya Lebar Airport at that time. Only five years later, construction on the second terminal had already started, responding to the rapid influx of new passengers. But the introduction of some unseen amenities at the time is what really sparked interest with the rest of the world. For instance, Changi Airport is the first ever airport to have a swimming pool located in the building. Later on, Terminal 3 was constructed and opened in 2008, and Terminal 4 was opened in 2017. Nowadays, it's one of the largest transportation hubs located in Asia. It is the most comfortable airport in the world, featuring a massive jewel building that is well known for its rain vortex, beautiful forest valley, and crazy glass bridges. It has been rated at the world's best airport several times, and also as the world's cleanest airport. The aviation hub hosts about 65 million yearly passengers, putting it in the top 20 of busiest airports across the globe. It is currently served with three massive runways and it consists of four terminal buildings, with a fifth one currently under construction. Oxygen, Saudi Arabia It's time to dive into the next project, Oxygen, which will stand as the world's largest floating structure, strategically positioned close to the bustling maritime pathway of the Suez Canal. It is conceptualized as a next-generation port that is destined to redefine maritime logistics through a fully automated and seamlessly integrated supply chain and logistics network. The layered complexity of this project melds together a state-of-the-art port, logistics, and rail delivery facility with thriving residential and business communities. The choice of positioning itself near the Suez Canal has been a subject of intense scrutiny and discussions among global observers. Critics argue that having such a significant structure close to a vital maritime route could stir geopolitical tensions, possibly altering regional dynamics. Furthermore, the floating city concept, while being a stroke of innovative genius, also triggers concerns regarding its potential impact on the delicate marine ecosystems, a concern that resonates with environmental advocates globally. But on the flip side, the Saudi government ardently believes that Oxygen has the potential to revolutionize maritime logistics and trade. They see it as a monumental step towards establishing Saudi Arabia as a pivotal player in the labyrinth of global commerce. The emphasis of the project on automation is seen as a groundbreaking approach to address some of the long-standing challenges that have plagued modern ports and logistics operations. Shuo Shinkansen, Japan the venture was conceived to replace the existing Takedo Shinkansen Maglev line, reducing the travel time between Tokyo and Nagoya by 50%, thus enhancing the connectivity and reducing geographical distances between major urban centers. The primary phase of the project, which commenced in December 2014, stretches over a span of 177 miles. This stretch comprises a whopping 159.4 miles of tunnels, 14.7 miles of viaducts, and 2.5 miles of rail beds. The linchpin of this project lies in its maglev technology, a system that enables trains to levitate above the tracks, significantly reducing friction and enabling unprecedented speeds. This technology, known as the Japanese Superconducting Magnetic Levitation System, is expected to connect Tokyo and Nagoya City in a mere 40 minutes, once operational in 2027. Post the inauguration of a different maglev railway between Tokyo and Osaka in 1964, the focus shifted towards the development of faster technology. The quest for speed led to the construction of a 4.3-mile test track in Miyazaki Prefecture during the 1970s. The track was later extended by 15.5 miles along the future route of the Chuo Shinkansen, allowing for extended high-speed tests. 
Public train rides at 311 miles per hour on the test track were initiated in 2014, illustrating the readiness and public anticipation for this futuristic transit system. Diamarbasha Dam, Pakistan the geographical location of the dam positions it as a crucial entity in a region that's a blend of rich cultural tapestries and diverse ecological biomass. Thus, its presence is more than monumental. It's a vital vein in the geographical and cultural expanse of the nation. Zooming into the construction nuances, the Diamer Basha Dam, with an expected financial outline upwards of 14 billion US dollars, mobilizes an army of engineers, laborers, and machines to maneuver approximately 17 million cubic meters of concrete. This mammoth task is set against a backdrop of complex geographical and seismic variables, thereby demanding an exemplary display of engineering precision, material science, and logistical prowess to secure its envisioned stature and functionality. Furthermore, it is pivotal to underscore the dam's ecological and social imprints. Over 30,000 individuals are anticipated to be relocated as a result of its construction, narrating stories of sacrifices entwined with the promise of a brighter, energized future. Concurrently, the dam's reservoir would submerge extensive areas, necessitating meticulous planning and execution to mitigate ecological impacts, preserving the indelible natural signatures of the region. And thus, as the Diamarbasha Dam strides towards its anticipated completion in 2028, it effortlessly intertwines tales of human ambition and the unyielding spirit of international collaboration, paving pathways through which water, energy, and human stories flow, converging towards a future wherein sustainability and development cascade in unison. The World Islands, Dubai this mega project consists of a lot of small artificial islands that are supposed to represent the world map located off the coast of Dubai. This may sound like a fun concept, but if you take a closer look at it, you can tell it's absolutely useless. The project has a total of 300 islands and each island is named after every single country in the world. Each island has a different size, but on average it's about 3.5 acres to 10.4 acres. The entire project covers an area of around 3.7 by 5.6 miles and it's surrounded by a breakwater island. However, this project was already doomed from the beginning because of the following reason. The construction of the mega project was done entirely by numerous private contractors, making it too ambitious. By 2021, only 9 of the 300 islands were ready for visitors and commercial use. But the problems only kick off here. The islands also don't have their own source of electricity and the project to run cable under the world islands completely failed. So far, the cost of the world islands is a total of $14 billion. Because the islands aren't in use and don't really mean anything, this mega project is useless. The International Space Station This is the largest structure humans ever sent into space. It weighs almost 400 tons and to build it, it was assembled gradually while orbiting planet Earth. The main structure of the ISS was built between 1998 and 2011. It has been consistently occupied since the year 2000 and it generally holds crews of between 3 to 6 people. It has been occupied for a total of 21 years and 344 days when making this video. The cost of running the space station has gone up to $160 billion. NASA alone spends $3 to $4 billion a year on it, but the mega project is also supported by multiple nations around the globe. Russia, Japan, Europe, and Canada. It takes 90 minutes for the International Space Station to make a complete circuit around the Earth. However, it's not moving without any purpose. The space station is a busy laboratory where astronauts spend a lot of time performing experiments. In simple terms, these experiments seek to understand everything that's going on in space and try to discover new mysteries about it. Kansai International Airport, Japan Kansai International Airport is the first 24-hour operated airport in Japan. It was constructed to deal with the problems the Osaka International Airport was facing and to match the influx of air travelers. It's located in the Kansai region around 3 miles offshore of the Senshu area. When the concept of the project was first created, the land it was supposed to be built on did not exist yet. They had to build an entire artificial island from scratch, and the construction on this was started in 1987. 
a gigantic layer of earth was put into the water, and the result is a 2.8 mile long and 1.5 mile wide custom-made island. The aviation hub finished construction four years after the island was made, and it was officially opened in 1994. Later on in 2007, the airport got a major expansion, adding a second runway and a second terminal to the island. But how is this airport connected to the mainland? As if the island and airport construction was not enough. They also constructed a 2.3 mile long bridge. It's a double decked bridge carrying six lanes of traffic with an additional two rail lines below the road. The construction of the bridge cost a total of $1 billion. Speaking of cost, constructing the artificial island and the airport cost the Japanese government a whopping $24 billion. However, there is a massive problem that might be at the end of the airport. Since the time of its conception, the issue of the further sinking has been a major one. The foundation of the island is a thick layer of clay and predictions regarding how much it will sink in the future vary a lot. Will the ground be able to handle the insane weight that this airport has? Only time will tell. Either way, this airport will go down as the most impressive airport in history. Burj Al Abbas, Turkey It sits Burj Al Abbas, a ghost town filled with castles that look like they're part of the latest Disney movie. Within this town, there are more than 500 vacant homes that all look the exact same. Their blue and gray color scheme brings to mind the castles you would usually spot in Disney parks. But how did this town even get here? The project got its start in 2014 when a few construction entrepreneurs from Istanbul drafted plans for a $200 million luxury community. When thinking of the design of the community, the entrepreneurs pulled inspiration from their home city of Istanbul. The Disney-like villas are meant to mimic the Galata Tower and Maiden's Tower as well as British and American architecture. The original plan included 700 villas that the entrepreneurs hoped would attract foreign buyers. The homes were sold for $370,000 to $500,000 each, and at the start, the project was very successful. 350 out of the 732 planned villas were sold right away to customers from all over the world. But as construction began on the mega project, not everyone was happy with it after all. Many locals were frustrated that the castle strayed away from Moderno's original architecture and many others worried that the construction of all the villas would damage nearby nature. Soon after this, oil prices also plunged, causing potential buyers to back out of their initial agreements and others stopped making plans on their future homes. All of these events combined with Turkey's insane inflation, political problems and economic downturn led to the entrepreneurs filing for bankruptcy in 2018, freezing the entire project. What remained were 587 completed Disney castles and $27 million of debt. But some good news was on the horizon. In 2019, the entrepreneurs were granted permission to finish the construction of all the villas, since their bankruptcy ruling was overturned. However, the good news didn't last long, since only a year later, the pandemic hit, delaying the project once again. Shortly afterwards, the project was then acquired by Nova Group Holdings, an American corporation that might get the project back on its feet. But for now, it remains as a stunning sight of abandoned identical three-story castles it now attracts many curious visitors seeking to explore the destination, and it's globally known as one of the largest ghost towns in the world. The Red Islands, Saudi Arabia The grandeur of this project is revealed through its expansive scope, which encompasses 22 unspoiled islands and six serene inland sites, all nestled within the exotic charm of Saudi Arabia's western coastline along the Red Sea. A meticulously planned layout is set to house approximately 8,000 lavish hotel rooms, each offering a blend of luxury and eco-friendliness. A hallmark of the Red Sea project is its unwavering commitment to sustainable initiatives that are intricately woven into the fabric of its design and operation. A cornerstone of this commitment is the extensive use of renewable energy sources, which will not only power the entire development, but also set a new benchmark in eco-conscious luxury tourism. But while the initiative has been largely celebrated, it has also spurred a series of debates, particularly concerning its environmental footprint. The construction activities on such pristine islands have been significant points of contention among environmentalists. 
Skepticism also hovers around the project's ambitious goals of achieving zero waste and meeting its energy needs through renewable sources. Supporters of the Red Sea Project, however, hail it as a benchmark in the realm of sustainable luxury tourism. The meticulously planned coral reef restoration projects and a myriad of other environmental initiatives are seen as proactive steps towards not only preserving but significantly enhancing the region's natural beauty. These measures, coupled with the luxury amenities available, are anticipated to provide an unparalleled experience for visitors, thereby positioning the Red Sea Project as a leading destination where luxury meets sustainability. Through these efforts, the Red Sea Project aspires to create a harmonious balance between indulgent tourism and ecological responsibility, setting a precedent that could inspire similar projects around the globe. The Great Wall of China Taking a monumental leap back in time, we land on a construction marvel that has not just stood as a sentinel through centuries, but has also transcended into a symbol of an ancient civilization's architectural prowess and strategic foresight. We're venturing along the staggering stretch of the Great Wall of China, an epic 22,000 kilometers of fortified elegance snaking through the diverse landscapes of northern China. The awe-inspiring journey of constructing this monumental structure spanned over two millennia, encapsulating the reigns of more than 19 dynasties, each leaving their indelible mark on this colossal structure. The timeline of construction commences earnestly during the Qin Dynasty around 221 BC, marking the initial phase of a relentless endeavor that saw major rebuilds, reinforcements, and extensions through subsequent dynasties, culminating during the Ming Dynasty which concluded in 1644. A colossal workforce was rallied, comprised of soldiers, peasants, prisoners, and a spectrum of skilled artisans and engineers. Their task was Herculean, to move 100 million tons of construction materials across the challenging terrains that ranged from the parched expanses of deserts to the steep, rugged ridges of mountains. The logistics and engineering methodologies employed were way ahead of their time, setting a precedent for large-scale construction projects. The wall was not a monolithic structure, but a series of walls and fortifications constructed using a blend of materials which ranged from tamped earth, wood, bricks, and stones. The Great Wall wasn't merely a physical barrier, it was an integrated military defensive system complete with fortresses, garrisons, and beacon towers for communication. The planning and design that went into ensuring the wall could withstand not just the ravages of time, but also military assaults, demonstrate the level of advanced engineering and military strategy that was employed. The Great Wall of China is not just a wall, it's a monumental narrative etched in stone, earth, and wood, spanning across the vast expanses of China, and also being named the longest construction project in the world. Mitsun Dam, Myanmar It's time to investigate the Mitsun Dam next, burgeoning amidst the lush landscapes of Myanmar where the Grand Irrawaddy River threads its vibrant story through the terrain. A chronicle of energy viability and environmental considerations slowly paints itself upon the rich tapestry of water and earth. Poised to be monumental in its stature, the Maitzone Dam's formidable presence in the course of the Irrawaddy River is projected to harness an impressive 13 billion cubic meters of water. The Irrawaddy River is not simply a body of water. It's a pulsating ecological matrix, providing sanctuary to approximately 43 fish species that are found nowhere else on Earth, in addition to critically supporting the livelihoods and food sources for millions of people. Thus, the construction of the dam is not solely an infrastructural endeavor. It transforms into an immense obligation to conserve, shield, and sustain the intricate equilibrium that nature has nurtured over countless eons. The Maitzon Dam, envisioned with a power generation capacity of 6,000 megawatts, symbolizes an energy potential robust enough to light millions of homes across the nation. To realize this ambitious venture, a staggering investment of approximately $3.6 billion is anticipated. Amidst the expansive stretches of the Irrawaddy, a torrent of controversy flows parallelly, threatening to inundate the project's objectives with waves of opposition and environmental apprehension. Numerous ecosystems and biodiverse habitats, intertwined with the flow of the Irrawaddy, stand to be disturbed by the dam's looming presence. Human tales entwine with environmental narratives, as communities resident along the river confront an impending displacement. 
With their histories, cultures, and livelihoods deeply rooted in the fertile banks of the Irrawaddy, the dam's imposition has seeded disquiet and resistance among the populace, foregrounding the strife between infrastructural advancement and the preservation of sociocultural integrity. A precise completion date remains elusive. However, due to various complexities and controversies, it has been iterated that the project will not see completion before the timeline stretches into the unforeseeable future. Hashima Island, Japan Hashima Island is a small unoccupied location right in front of the Japanese coast. The island has earned the nickname Battleship Island because of its shape, and it has now been abandoned for several years. However, the island isn't completely abandoned. People who visited the island claim that there are ghosts of the past who have taken over the entire place. In 1887, the Hashima Island was discovered, and it became an important coal mine at the time. In 1916, the first ever building appeared on the island, and after this, many more were constructed as well. Around 50 years later, in 1974, the mine started to run out of coal, and many people left the island. Very soon after this, all of the buildings were reclaimed by nature. The heavy weather conditions in the area of the island started affecting the concrete, and many buildings started falling apart. Sometimes people camped out on the island, but this was a very dangerous thing to do. The Japanese government wanted to discourage people from going over there on their own, so they decided to open up the island to the public. All of the extremely dangerous buildings that were on the verge of collapsing were destroyed and replaced to make sure the tourists visiting the location wouldn't get hurt. However, opening the island to the public didn't attract many tourists at all, since the history of the island is quite dark. Many people were forced to work on the island in the 1900s, and the conditions of these laborers were horrible. Some of the workers never made it back home. The people who have visited the island claim the echoes of the past still linger there. Fishermen who sail near the island claim they have seen strange lights in the buildings. Even though the entire island has no electricity, strange noises have been heard by tourists, and some even claim that they were touched by unseen hands. Nowadays, the island is still open to the public, so if you love horror, perhaps you should go and visit this scary island. Ryujian Hotel, North Korea this is the tallest unoccupied building around the globe, also known by its nickname, the Tower of Doom. It's located in North Korea, which is also a part of the reason why it's unoccupied. It's supposed to be a hotel, but North Korea doesn't really fancy hosting tourists. Getting into North Korea as a tourist can be a very difficult challenge, and many tourists don't even consider going there. The reason the 105-story hotel was built in the first place is because in the 1980s, North Korea was actually expected to host a lot of tourists. North Korea wanted to compete with its rival South Korea, who had just finished building the tallest hotel in the world elsewhere. That's why the country started plans to build a unique pyramid-shaped hotel in the capital, Pyongyang. At a height of 330 meters, or 1,080 feet, the Ryongyong Hotel would beat the height of South Korea's tallest hotel at the time. However, soon after construction began, the problems started to pop up. The project was immediately hit with engineering problems, and after a lot of delays, the project finally hit its peak height in 1992. But there was one major issue. By the time this happened, the financial backer of the project, the Soviet Union, no longer existed. There was no more capital to fund the project, causing the project to be paused entirely. Back then, the Ryuyong Hotel was just a concrete structure with no windows whatsoever. Only the outer walls were standing. Construction of the hotel was halted for a total of 16 years until a company from Egypt took over. In 2012, this company installed a glass facade and LEDs to the outside of the building for an estimate of $180 million. But if you thought the issues would end here, you're wrong. North Korea was facing new political problems during this time, causing the entire project to be abandoned once again. The total estimated cost of the hotel is over $2 billion, which is around 5% of North Korea's total GDP. No official information is available about whether or not the mega project will ever be finished. Although this seems very unlikely, since North Korea is in the wealthiest country. After many attempts to bring this project to life, it remains completely useless. Naypyidaw Ghost City, Myanmar This is a brand new capital completely built from scratch. In 2002, the government secretly started constructing this capital city. In November 2005, Myanmar's leaders announced the new capital to the public, but they kept the name a secret. The name Naypyidaw was revealed four months later, which means the king's residence. 
To this date, the government spent around $4 billion to build the city. The brand new capital city has everything to attract tourism. Over a hundred luxury hotels, a 20-lane highway, museums, golf courses, and even a replica of a landmark that used to be part of the last capital city. However, one very important piece of the puzzle was missing, the residents. The new capital is home to less than a million people, and this includes a lot of people who were already living in the area before the city was even there. But why on earth does nobody want to live here? This is because of poor health facilities, lack of education, and lack of economic opportunities, and nobody wants to make the capital city their home. It is often referred to as the ghost town. Just look at this 20-lane highway, it's basically empty. You usually only see a single vehicle driving on the gigantic road. The capital has an airport that could handle 3.5 million travelers every year, but on a good day, maybe 10 people will actually use it. Besides the airport being empty, the hotels are empty, the malls are empty, basically everything you can imagine is peaceful and quiet. However, there is still a small chance the city will succeed. Myanmar's population is still growing, and it's growing pretty fast. Maybe in the future the city will be seen as a home to many people, but for now it remains completely useless. Gibraltar International Airport Gibraltar International Airport, also known as North Front Airport, is located in the British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar. In 1935, the airport opened as an emergency airfield for the Royal Navy at the time. However, the runway was very short back then, making it impossible for big planes to land there. But the impressive thing about this airport is that Winston Churchill Avenue, the main road in Gibraltar, intersects the airport's runway. It has to be closed down every time a plane wants to land at Gibraltar International Airport. When it opens up and you're in your car, you can literally drive on the runway to the other side. But why on earth did Gibraltar decide to go with this crazy runway arrangement? Well, they basically had no other choice because the runway falls in the full length of Gibraltar from east to west. The highway that crosses the runway connects the southern part of Gibraltar with the border of Spain. There are very strict safety procedures in place to make sure no car is on the runway when a plane is taking off. Airport authorities perform a thorough inspection prior to each takeoff or landing to make sure the runway is free from any foreign object debris. But it is not just the intersection on the runway that makes this airport impressive. It's also extremely difficult to land at this airport. The unusual location of the massive rock on the island of Gibraltar and the extreme wind conditions make it a real challenge to land here for pilots during the winter season. However, this airport is about to change big time because the government confirmed that a tunnel will be constructed so that the traffic will run underneath the runway. See you at Real Central Airport, Spain. This airport was built because Spain is one of the top tier travel locations for tourists so they needed extra space to handle all the air traffic. The plan was for the Ciudad Real Central Airport to become the tourist hub of Spain and to make it a great alternative to the extremely crowded Madrid airport at that time. The new airport could handle around 2 million passengers a year, which is a pretty low number. That's why expansion plans were introduced to bump that up to 10 million passengers a year. In 2009, the airport became fully operational However, only three years later, everything collapsed because the company running the project filed for bankruptcy. There are numerous issues this airport has to deal with, starting with location. The name was Central Airport, but the location wasn't really central at all. It's located over 125 miles away from Madrid. This is why many tourists avoided the brand new airport because they didn't feel like traveling for hours to get to their final destination. Not only the passengers, but also airlines prefer to fly to the capital Madrid. With both parties not interested in the airport whatsoever, it accumulated a $350 million debt by 2012. Following the debt, the airport was put up for auction a year later in 2013. In 2019, the airport was sold to the new owners. The new owners decided it was best to reinvent it to be a home for grounded planes. This new approach of becoming a parking lot for airplanes gave the airport a brand new purpose. However, this was all during the pandemic, so eventually all of the planes will be used again thus making the airport useless. Merdeka 118, Kuala Lumpur This city is among one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas worldwide, 
And to add even more towers to the city, the Merdeka 118 skyscraper will be completing in 2023 earning the title of the tallest structure in Asia, as well as the second tallest skyscraper in the world, coming in behind the Burj Khalifa. To earn these titles, the Malaysian government had to construct a 678 meters tall structure, featuring 118 stories that will be used for observation decks, office space, and several hotels. At the bottom of the tower, a seven-story glass dome will be constructed, making place for the biggest mall in Malaysia. But this building would mean nothing without its incredible design. In 1957, the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tunku Abdul Rahman, famously raised his hand while chanting Merdeka seven times, which means independence. The spire that tops the building reflects this historical moment, with the tower itself representing Rahman's body. Although their construction progress might be perfectly on track, the mega project is facing a sheer amount of controversy. While Malaysia's Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim can't stop praising the tower, calling it a great contribution to their economy, Many Malaysians are criticizing the project because of its price tag. Costing $1.1 billion, many people believe these funds could have been used for practical causes instead, such as education and healthcare, which has been increasingly deteriorating over the years. Regardless of this controversy, the tower is almost completed and it's set to open by mid-2023. Long Fan International Airport the country's air traffic has been growing drastically, resulting in the Tan Sun Yat Airport crossing its capacity back in 2016. Here's where the Long Tan International Airport will offer a solution to this problem, constructing a new aviation hub set to handle 100 million passengers annually. If it reaches that milestone in the future, it would become the busiest airport worldwide. The passenger terminal's design is the motif of a lotus shape, symbolizing the elegant and warm Vietnamese culture. To accomplish this futuristic look, the construction plans were divided into three phases. The first phase is set to be completed in 2023, hosting only 17 million passengers annually with a single terminal and runway. Later down the road, the second and third phase will expand the airport's capacity by adding three more runways, reaching the 100 million passengers mark in 2050. With this master plan claiming the title of Vietnam's biggest mega project comes an insane price tag of $16 billion, which is 4.3% of Vietnam's GDP. And as if that wasn't enough, they're also planning on spending more capital on the airport's connectivity, constructing a 38-kilometer-long railway connection to Ho Chi Minh City to ensure the airport can handle their ambitious expansion plans. Barangaroo District, Australia Barangaroo's history goes back to the 1850s when it was the most viable harbor in Australia, with many trading routes running through the port. However, around 100 years later, the introduction of massive shipping containers meant that Barangaroo became an unsustainable site that was unable to offer the space required for the newly invented tankers. This led to the area's abandonment, and its state remained the same all the way until 2005, when a design competition was held for the area's redevelopment. The winner's $8 billion plan features three precincts, starting with Barangaroo South, which will be home to a new ferry port, the International Towers Sydney, and many more high-rise buildings. The central area is intended for residential units, adding a new metro station to the district. And lastly, its reserve area will be home to a 15-acre park with plenty of space for greenery and events. Construction on the redevelopment began back in 2007, and with most of the precincts nearing completion as we speak, the Barangaroo District will officially be reopened in 2023. 
Guangzhou Evergrande Stadium, China. When thinking of China, you might think of their Great Wall, their exquisite cuisine, or their status of being the largest factory around the globe. You better get ready to add soccer to this list, because China currently has an official state goal of becoming the best football club in the world by 2050. To help achieve this objective, they are currently constructing the Guangzhou Evergrande Stadium, which when finished will be able to accommodate 100,000 spectators inside, surpassing Barcelona's Camp Nou by a slim 646 spectators. China hopes to compete with global landmarks such as Sydney's Opera House and New York's Statue of Liberty, building their own remarkable stadium while Chinese soccer goes international. The $1.8 billion project began construction back in April of 2020. However, around a year later, the Evergrande Group stated that they were dealing with a severe liquidity crisis, causing the future of the stadium to suddenly become uncertain. They were unable to meet repayments of over $300 billion in debt, resulting in their plans to be paused altogether. The Chinese government even decided to seize the entire project, planning to sell the incomplete stadium to another company. Luckily, this never happened, since the Evergrande Group managed to resolve their liquidity issues, meaning the project is still estimated to open in 2023. But this isn't the only massive stadium that China is planning to construct. To expand their soccer infrastructure even more, they're aiming to build another four stadiums that can each host between 80 to 100,000 spectators meaning that all of these projects would rank in the top five biggest stadiums in the world. Tacoma Narrows Bridge, United States For this mistake, we're going back in time to the 1940s. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge just opened up to the public on the 1st of July. The bridge connected Tacoma to Gig Harbor. It was the third longest suspension bridge in the world at that time, following right behind the George Washington Bridge and the famous Golden Gate Bridge. The bridge was constructed to be the most flexible ever seen. Everyone was convinced that the bridge was completely safe, but they all turned out to be horribly wrong. It turned out that the engineers had not properly considered the aerodynamic forces that were in play at the location of the bridge. There were periods with very strong winds which made the bridge sway like this. On November 7th, the bridge completely collapsed into the water below. Luckily, nobody got injured during the collapse because the problem was already known for a longer period of time. The bridge quickly became famous as the most dramatic bridge construction failure in history. The bridge had to be upgraded. Ten years after the collapse, a new and improved bridge opened. Fast forward 70 years, and that bridge is still standing till this day. With all of its costs combined, the bridge costs a total of $786 million to complete. California High Speed Rail, United States In 2008, plans got approved to build the California High Speed Rail after 12 years of planning. The hope was that the train would run from the Bay Area to Southern California to shorten the travel time between major cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles. The project cost was estimated at $68 billion. Construction finally started in 2015 but was soon halted three years later under former President Donald Trump. Trump asked California to return the funding they had received for the project back to the White House. California refused to do so. The plan was for the rail to be finished in 2020, but the project suffered from various delays because of mismanagement. Although this was one of the largest construction projects in California's history, only 10 people were brought on to manage the project. The consultants working on this project thought they could save a lot of money by not hiring a large crew of engineers and experts. The state trusted them for years, and the work they were doing was only overseen by a small group of people. The project is now more than a decade behind schedule. Plus, due to bad advice from the same consultants, the California High Speed Rail project is now $44 billion over budget. This construction mistake could go down in history as one of the most expensive ones ever made. 
Jeddah Tower, Saudi Arabia. Jeddah Tower, previously known as Kingdom Tower, is located in Saudi Arabia. At a height of 1,000 meters, Jeddah Tower was going to be the first one kilometer high building worldwide. The skyscraper is part of Saudi Arabia's push to diversify the country's economy towards tourism, similar to what Dubai has with the famous Burj Khalifa. Jeddah Tower is designed by Adrian Smith, who also designed Dubai's tourist attraction. Construction of the Jeddah Tower began in 2013 and was scheduled to be completed by 2018. However, the 2017 Saudi Arabian purge caused major construction problems and work on the building stopped with only a third of the tower done. Major investors of the project were imprisoned by the government. After the investors were free again a few months later, construction of the Jeddah Tower was still on hold and there was no official date for its completion. Currently, the tower has reached a height of 252 meters, only a quarter of the scheduled height. The pandemic has further delayed plans for the construction to continue in 2020 as it would not be safe for workers. If the project gets abandoned midway through its construction, there would be a loss of at least a billion dollars. Nobody really knows what's going to happen next as the project currently sits on hold. Harmon Hotel, Las Vegas the Harmon Hotel was a high-rise building located in Las Vegas, Nevada. At the start of the project, its name was Lifestyle Hotel. It was supposed to become a boutique hotel with a very central location in the city. It was planned to have 400 hotel rooms and 207 apartments. There was also supposed to be a pool deck on the roof of the building looking out over the Las Vegas Strip. But this is obviously never what it became. On July 11, 2011, a report was released indicating that the entire building could possibly collapse in the event of a major earthquake. This was caused by improper installation of critical steel reinforcements. The construction mistake was discovered when 15 stories of the building were already in place. The error caused a major change in the building's design. Instead of the Harmon Hotel being 49 stories, they decided to reduce it to 28 stories. But on August 15, 2011, plans were announced to implode the entire building. The hotel's demolition got approved as it presented a threat to public safety because of the risk of the entire building collapsing. Unlike many other Las Vegas properties that usually get imploded using explosives, the Harmon Hotel got a different treatment. The hotel was taken down floor by floor due to its location being very close to other buildings. The costs for using this method came down to a whopping $173 million. That's one very expensive construction mistake right there. Berlin Brandenburg Airport, Germany Berlin Brandenburg Airport is an international airport project in Germany. When construction started in 2006, the project was planned to cost around $2.4 billion, and it was planned to open in 2011. However, what followed next were a bunch of delays caused by construction mistakes. The first delay happened in 2010, around one year before the scheduled opening, when the bankruptcy of an involved planning company was announced. Other delays were caused by fire protection requirements that could not be met. The airport also failed the acceptance test required to function as an airport. Because of this, a total of 37 miles of cooling pipes were installed to solve this mistake. To date, the costs have more than tripled because of all these construction mistakes to a total of $8.3 billion. 14 years after the start of construction and 9 years after the original opening date, Berlin-Brandenburg Airport went into operation in 2020. However, this is not where the expensive mistakes end for this airport. Despite its opening, the airport is unlikely to be able to finance itself both during and after the pandemic. More funds will be needed to prevent bankruptcy, which could cost an additional $2 billion. Elephant Tower, Thailand The elephant-shaped building has a height of 335 feet and its construction was completed in 1997. It consists of three towers joined across the top by a horizontal band of residential suites. The building has multiple details on the side that represent body parts of an elephant, 
such as the two round windows that represent its eyes, or the glass enclosed rooms down the rear of the building that represent its tail. Now, why on earth did this elephant get constructed? Elephants have played a central role in Thai society for many centuries, so this building is simply a tribute to their own culture. However, international response to the construction has been very mixed. CNN added the elephant to their World's 25 Great Skyscrapers list, while Architectural Digest has done the exact opposite, listing it among the 31 ugliest skyscrapers in the world. Grand Lisboa Hotel, China At a height of 856 feet, it's one of the tallest buildings in the city Macau that's located near Hong Kong. The building was designed by architects Dennis Lau and Chengmen, and they were inspired by a lotus flower opening up since that's an important symbol near the Macau region. While that's what the architects meant, this building went viral on social media since it looks like a structure that could have been part of the movie Inception. The entire building is covered with 24 karat gold-coated glass to really make it stand out in the city skyline. This made the building's costs rise quickly, ending on a total budget spent of $3 billion. Abandoned City of Krakow, Italy For nearly 50 years, the town of Krakow in southern Italy has been abandoned. Krakow was once a monastic center, a feudal town and the center of education with a university, castle, church and plazas. But today the abandoned location of Krakow has been featured in many movies including Saving Grace and James Bond. It is a former medieval village located in the Balissicata region of Italy, about 27 miles away from the Gulf of Taranto. The town occupies a rock formation above the surrounding hills with its architecture neatly built into the landscape. Strategically located on top of a 1,300 feet high cliff overlooking the countryside of southern Italy, this ghost town once provided panoramic views and warnings of potential attackers. The city was found around the year 540 by the Greeks who had moved inland from the coast. Back in the day, Krakow was called Monte d'Oro. Tombstones have been found near the village dating back to the 8th century which suggests that the original settlement dates back to the Iron Age. The oldest building in Krakow that still stands until this day is the Norman Tower, which was built in 1040. The population of Krakow grew from 450 residents in 1277 to 2,590 residents in 1516. But the future of the village changed forever when a natural disaster struck Krakow in the 1950s, causing many residents to move away from the town. But many of the residents didn't want to leave since they were very attached to this beautiful medieval town. A few years later, the soil conditions of this town deteriorated even further, causing more landslides and making the town very dangerous to live in. In 1963, the last 1,800 residents in Krakow were forced to leave the town for their own safety and were relocated to a town close by. Nowadays, Krakow has been abandoned, plundered, overgrown, and is no longer accessible to the public, only by guided tour. While the town has fallen to ruin, Several of the buildings, palaces and churches still remain intact. In 2010, this beautiful village was added to the watch list by the World Monuments Fund, making sure capital is available to maintain the site of Krakow. Antalya Skyscraper, India This massive tower is owned by Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani, but he doesn't live there by himself. Instead of buying his entire family separate mansions, he sorted them all out with a 27-story skyscraper as their brand new residence. With a height of 568 feet, it's one of the world's largest private homes, and it comes with a ton of insane amenities. The family's home has three helipads, a 168-car garage, a 50-seat theater, and even a dedicated snow room. While a building of this altitude usually has 60 floors, this particular one only has 27 floors, with all of them having extra high ceilings. Antilia has not only been named one of the world's largest private homes, but also as one of the most expensive in the world. Its total cost was estimated to be $2.6 billion, coming in at the number two spot right behind Buckingham Palace. F and F Tower, Panama City when a Spanish architecture firm started its construction, they weren't even certain if this tower was possible. 
They only had a $50 million budget to work with, making it a real challenge. But luckily, they made it work, and after five years of construction, the skyscraper opened up in 2011. The concept is based on the geometric rotation of a prism with each floor rotating 9 degrees from the floor below. Its height comes in at 797 feet and it has a total of 52 floors, providing over 650,000 square feet of office space. The FNF Tower is a popular tourist attraction and it's one of the most impressive skyscrapers in Panama City. Huala Tower, Hong Kong Although its official name is Lippo Center, it is often referred to as Koala Tower because its design looks like koalas hugging each other. Previously known as the Bon Center, the twin towers are located in Hong Kong, with one tower being 564 feet tall and the other one being 610 feet tall. The Lippo Center is a landmark development providing a total of 1.3 million square feet of office space across the two towers. With the Koala Tree as its nickname, the Lippo Center has been one of the most important commercial towers in Hong Kong for the past decades. Plymouth, Montserrat The town of Plymouth was once the capital of the Caribbean island of Montserrat. It is often referred to as the Lost Caribbean Paradise, and it also has the nickname the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. The island was first discovered in 1493 by Christopher Columbus. Ever since the population of the island grew, starting from zero in 1493 all the way to 13,000 in 1994. But disaster struck this little paradise on the 18th of July 1995. On that day, the previously dormant volcano Sofriere Hills erupted in fire and fury. Over a period of five years, between 1995 and 2000, around 66% of the island's residents were forced to flee, mostly to Great Britain. In the destruction, the little Georgian capital city of Plymouth was destroyed and buried under the volcanic ash. Until this day, the volcano still continues to erupt and the whole northern half of the island is inhabitable because of this. During the eruption, the former airport of the island was also destroyed and buried by volcanic flows. For a few years after this, the only way on and off the island was by boat. In July 2005, a new airport was opened on the northern part of the island, where it's safe until this day. Nowadays, Plymouth is buried under 4.6 feet of ash. The site and carnage are so insane that it is called the Pompeii of the Caribbean. The volcano destroyed around 80% of the entire town. The only people visiting the deserted town today are tourists, together with their certified tour guides. There is a big exclusion zone on the island that tourists are not allowed to enter. Evolution Tower, Moscow Construction on this DNA-shaped building was started in 2011 and completed on October 6, 2014. The 55-story office building has a height of 807 feet and it's famously known around Moscow for its futuristic DNA-like design. Each of the 51 floors is rotated 3 degrees compared to the previous one, meaning the building is swirled by over 150 degrees. Because of its impressive design, the building has earned multiple awards throughout the years, coming in for second place at the Emporis Skyscraper Awards in 2015 and being voted Moscow's best office building in that same year. The Big Bend, New York Its future location will be Billionaire's Row in Midtown Manhattan, New York. The tower that was designed by architectural firm Olio Studio has been described as the longest building in the world. The proposal of this design is most known for its distinctive U-shape that would change the New York skyline forever. It would have a total length of 4,000 feet from the left base all the way to the right base, having a peak height of 1,969 feet. This would make it the tallest building in New York surpassing the height of the One World Trade Center by 200 feet. The Big Bend would most likely have the Calvary Baptist Church in between the skyscraper's two bases, essentially squeezing the building. However, this project has a ton of problems to overcome before construction can actually get started. It has been argued that the Big Bend is unlikely to ever be built in general due to lack of funding, but also lack of support from nearby communities, like the Calvary Baptist Church that would be squeezed in between the project. 
Ever since 2017, the Big Bend has been in the proposal stage, having sent the design to several developers, seeking for any form of investment for the project. No news has come out about the project's future, so only time will tell whether or not this U-shaped structure will ever become reality. Alaskan Way Viaduct, Seattle This project was envisioned and meticulously engineered to substitute the Alaskan Way Viaduct Elevated Highway, a key infrastructure in the bustling heart of Seattle, Washington. The inception of this prodigious undertaking was primarily driven by the urgent need to enhance the region's resilience to seismic activities, while augmenting the city's traffic flow efficiency. At the helm of this monumental endeavor was the revered Bertha, at the time recognized as one of the globe's largest tunnel boring machines, brandishing a formidable cutting diameter of 57.5 feet. Bertha's prowess was put to the test amidst a labyrinth of diverse soil conditions and unforeseen obstructions lurking beneath Seattle's landscape. The SR-99 tunnel was intricately designed as a double-deck tunnel, boasting two lanes on each deck, an architectural configuration meticulously crafted to harmonize with the city's burgeoning traffic demands. This design not only facilitates fluid vehicular movement, but also significantly contributes to reducing congestion on Seattle's streets. With a staggering price tag of $3.3 billion, the tunnel's modern design has cutting-edge safety features that epitomize the marriage of engineering excellence and safety prioritization. The tunnel is equipped with an automatic fire detection and suppression system that acts swiftly in the face of fire emergencies, alongside a robust ventilation system meticulously engineered to ensure optimal air quality, thus creating a safe and comfortable environment for motorists. Post-construction, the SR-99 tunnel has morphed into a linchpin for improved traffic flow and heightened safety within Seattle's urban fabric. An astounding 850,000 tons of material unearthed during the tunneling voyage was resourcefully recycled, a testament to the project's unwavering commitment towards environmental sustainability. Interstate 4 Ultimate Highway, Orlando This initiative aimed to overhaul a crucial 21-mile stretch of Interstate 4 extending from west of Kirkman Road in Orlando to east of State Road 434 in Longwood. Completed in 2022, this project is hailed as the largest highway infrastructure project in Florida's history, marking a monumental stride towards modernizing Central Florida's roadway system. The core of the project revolved around the complete reconstruction and widening of I-4, transforming it into a state-of-the-art thoroughfare capable of handling the bustling traffic of Florida's rapidly growing urban centers. One of the notable features of this project was the addition of four express toll lanes in the median, providing a faster travel alternative for motorists willing to pay a toll. This addition was envisioned to foster a smoother flow of traffic, alleviating congestion during peak travel times. Additionally, a total of 15 major interchanges were reconstructed to ensure safer and more efficient traffic flow, catering to the demands of the modern urban commute. The striking scope of bridge work within this project showcased the extensive scale of this infrastructure endeavor. A total of 53 new bridges were constructed, 74 existing bridges were replaced, and 13 more were widened, enhancing the structural integrity and capacity of the roadway system. With a budget of $2.3 billion, the revamped I-4 now serves as a robust artery, facilitating smoother travel for Central Florida motorists and playing a pivotal role in bolstering the region's economic vitality. La Guardia Airport Renovation, New York This monumental endeavor, which ceremoniously broke ground in 2016, is meticulously sculpted to metamorphose LaGuardia Airport into a modern, unified aviation hub, etching its name as one of the most distinguished airport redevelopment endeavors witnessed in the United States in over two decades. The grand blueprint for this redevelopment was unfurled in 2015, with a dream of transmuting LaGuardia into a world-class, 21st century passenger haven. The architectural renaissance envisaged for the airport melds modern customer amenities with state-of-the-art architectural design, more expansive gate areas, and a unified terminal system, all curated with a laser focus on satiating the contemporary exigencies of globe trotters. 
Encapsulated within the redevelopment narrative are the extensive overhauls of Terminal B and Terminal C, each a colossal project in its own right. The redevelopment saga of Terminal B unfolds with a staggering $4 billion budget, nurturing a new 1.3 million square foot terminal into existence. In a parallel narrative, Terminal C, blossoming with an equivalent budget of $4 billion, opened its gates in June 2022 as a harbinger of modernity. Beyond the architectural marvels and technological advancements, the economic reverberations of this redevelopment project resonate profoundly within the local and national economic landscape. The project, with its towering financial outlay, is a fertile ground for job creation, poised to spawn 8,000 direct jobs alongside 10,000 indirect employment opportunities. The economic tapestry woven by this project is rich, generating a whopping $1.3 billion in wages and propelling a robust $5.2 billion in direct economic activity. This economic infusion not only catapults LaGuardia Airport into the modern epoch, but also significantly nourishes the local economy, rendering it a monumental narrative not solely for New York but for the broader contours of the nation. East Side Access Project, New York this project emerges as a colossal endeavor, meticulously conceived to interlink the Long Island Railroad with a newly engineered terminal nestled beneath the iconic Grand Central Terminal in the heart of Manhattan. The project narrative unfolds over a stretch of eight miles of intricate tunneling escapades, each mile laden with its own set of formidable challenges and engineering enigmas waiting to be deciphered. The arsenal employed to conquer the subterranean realms and carve out the pathways integral to this massive transit expansion was an amalgamation of modern-day tunnel boring machines and traditional tunneling methodologies. These machines, hailed for their precision and power, alongside time-tested tunneling techniques, orchestrated a symphony of engineering marvels as they navigated through the bedrock and other geological formations. As the chapters of the East Side Access project gradually transitioned from blueprints to tangible reality, the meticulous planning and execution witnessed the dawn of an infrastructural masterpiece nestled beneath the bustling streets of Manhattan. With an impressive budget allocation of $11.2 billion, it is anticipated to graciously serve around 162,000 commuters on a daily basis. The ripple effect of this project is expected to transcend beyond the realms of enhanced transit convenience. By furnishing a robust and efficient public transit alternative, East Side Access stands as a stalwart advocate for eco-friendliness in a city where the carbon footprint is a concern of paramount significance. By enticing a substantial populace to transition from personal vehicular commute to embracing public transit, the project is not merely alleviating the often congested traffic arteries of the city but is significantly contributing towards reducing the carbon emissions. This venture, with its far-reaching implications, is set to etch a significant mark in the annals of New York's infrastructural evolution, emboldening other metropolises to envision and embark upon similar infrastructural renaissance endeavors. Trans-Alaska Pipeline System, Alaska This gargantuan venture, extending over 800 miles from the oil-abundant plains of Prudho Bay to the ice-free harbor of Valdez, was birthed to channel the coveted black gold nestled beneath the Alaskan tundra to the voraciously energy-hungry markets of the contiguous United States. Initiated in the turbulent 1970s, amidst the shadows of an encroaching energy crisis, the inception of this project emerged as a bold retort to the nation's clamor for energy self-sufficiency. With a construction budget that soared beyond $8 billion during that epoch, it was heralded as one of the most financially audacious undertakings of its era. In the contemporary economic landscape, this financial behemoth would transmute into a staggering $32 billion, showcasing the monumental financial commitment that underscored this endeavor. The project, with its colossal scope, was brought to fruition within a stringent time frame of merely three years, amidst the inhospitable and unforgiving wilderness of Alaska. The engineering marvels embedded within the sinews of the pipeline system are boundless. Crafted to traverse some of the most formidable terrains our planet harbors, its trajectory navigates through three towering mountain ranges and fords over 800 rivers and streams. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline System became a linchpin in bolstering the Alaskan economy, spawning employment opportunities, and catapulting the country onto the prestigious stage of significant players in the global energy market. 
Furthermore, it etched a blueprint for conceiving and executing large-scale pipeline projects in hostile environments, unfurling the boundless horizons of human ingenuity and technological prowess. The enduring legacy of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System is not confined to its steel sinews, but reverberates through the annals of engineering excellence. Domino Tower, Zanzibar the town currently has no skyscrapers, but in the near future, it will be home to this massive domino tower, which will be built on a man-made island. This newly invented design was brought to life in 2009, and it is estimated to be completed in 2027. Because of the $1.3 billion cost, it's still up in the air whether or not the tower can be fully realized with this project taking up 60% of the town's annual budget. However, they're aiming to construct it nonetheless, since Domino Tower is part of Zanzibar's Blue Economy strategy, which attempts to attract international investors to their region. The man-made island will be constructed in the Indian Ocean, and with such a heavy tower on top of it, it is unknown if the project can withstand flooding as sea levels continue to rise due to climate change. Domino Tower has yet to break ground, but it is expected to begin construction in the upcoming year. Oblisco Capital, Egypt They intend to build the Oblisco Capital, which will attempt to dethrone Dubai's Burj Khalifa as the world's tallest structure. The tower is part of Egypt Vision 2030, the country's ambitious master plan aimed at improving quality of life as well as sustainability and innovation. It will be located right outside of Egypt's capital Cairo, in the planned to be constructed new administrative capital. This city is a government-led project aimed at creating a new and smart metropolis that will do wonders for the country's economic development. With 170 floors, the building will include every amenity imaginable, from shopping malls to endless hotel suites. When completed, it will stand 3,280 feet or 1,000 meters tall, surpassing Dubai's Burj Khalifa by 560 feet. To make it look even more majestic, a water canal will be built around the Oblisco Capital as a reference to their iconic Nile River. The project's construction work has not yet begun, but it is anticipated to get underway in 2024 and to be completed by 2030. Sky Mile Tower, Tokyo, Japan It's time to take a journey to Tokyo, Japan, where perhaps the most impressive skyscraper on this list will be located. The Sky Mile Tower is yet another project that is looking to dethrone the Burj Khalifa, but not just by making it slightly taller, but by doubling the height of Dubai's centerpiece. Over the past few decades, Japan's vulnerability to seismic activity and natural calamities has increased, which is why the Sky Mile Tower was conceived. Its future location will be on an artificial island made of reclaimed land in Tokyo Bay. And in addition to the tower, there are also plans to build a mini-city at the structure's base. The Sky Mile Tower will have a hexagonal shape consisting of multiple sets of three interlinked building legs, creating multiple sky lobbies alongside the tower. It would reach a height of 5,577 feet, housing 4.5 million square feet of floor area, doubling both the height and interior space of the Burj Khalifa. Because pumping water from the ground would be difficult, the tower's legs will be designed to harvest clouds for water, which will then be collected centrally inside the skyscraper. No construction progress has been announced as of right now, but if completed, it will cost their government an estimated seven to nine billion dollars. Tokyo Tower of Babel, Japan In 1992, the concept for the Tokyo Tower of Babel was brought to life, envisioning a city inside of a skyscraper. 
Once finished, the building would be gigantic enough to accommodate 30 million residents, which is more people than the entire population of Texas. Coming in at a height of 10 kilometers or 33,000 feet, it would be even higher than the altitude the average airplane flies at. To build such an insane tower in the future, architects would need a base of around 2,500 square miles, which is five times the size of New York City. However, it may never see the light of day, because the price tag may be too high for them to ever afford. It would cost an estimated $22 trillion to build, which is more than four times Japan's GDP making it an unfeasible investment at this time. However, new skyscraper concepts are constantly being developed, so perhaps someone will find a way to reduce the price tag someday. The Futuristic City of Tolosa, United States In September 2021, American billionaire Mark Lohr announced plans for Tolosa, a futuristic megacity located in the middle of the desert that resembles Saudi Arabia's The Line. While the billionaire's plans could become reality in the future, the city's long list of problems tells a different story. Will this mega project turn into America's first futuristic city? Or will it become an abandoned metropolis with no residents? Today, we will explore the problems that Tolosa is facing and whether or not they'll ever be resolved. Whether you live in a city or not, you most likely travel by car or public transportation. Every day, the average American spends 55 minutes commuting to and from work. Now imagine you live in Tolosa, where your fossil fuel-powered car isn't even allowed to enter the city because all of your everyday needs are located within a five-minute commute from your home. This is just one of the goals that former Walmart CEO Mark Lohr has in mind for his futuristic metropolis, which is supposed to change how Americans live on a day-to-day -day basis. Tolosa is a response to all of the issues we have in today's world, such as climate change, pollution, and housing shortages. It seeks to reimagine how we can create a thriving city that is sustainable, inclusive, and equal for all residents. The wealth gap has grown to its widest point in history over the last century, and Lohr hopes to close it with his project. He envisions a city in which everyone, regardless of background, has equal economic opportunities. To achieve this result, Tolosa will operate on a system called equitism. The concept is that anyone would be able to build homes and sell them, while the city retains ownership of the underlying land. If the city were to thrive, the value of that land would increase, thus generating revenue. According to Mark Lohr, this could generate $50 billion in earnings each year, and he plans to invest a large portion of that revenue into high-quality services such as healthcare, schools, and public transport. Tolosa's future location will be somewhere in the United States' southwest desert, most likely in Nevada, Arizona, or Texas. The city is envisioned there because of the low-cost land, and it will be spread out over 150,000 acres, roughly the same size as Chicago. A skyscraper called Equitism Tower will be built in the city center to house aeroponic farms. Every building will be covered in solar panels and nature, ensuring that residents always have access to an abundance of open space. The construction of the city is divided into two phases, the first phase of construction would cover only 1,500 acres and would house 50,000 people by 2030. For the second phase, the city's backers hope it will span 150,000 acres, housing 5 million citizens by 2070. Although there is no doubt that Mark Lohr is serious about this project, having hired 50 experts to work on the city, we can't ignore the massive problems Tolosa must solve before it can become a reality. One of the most obvious problems is its location. In terms of pricing, America's Southwest Desert is an ideal place for a large metropolis, but not in terms of efficiency. As an example of similar projects, let's look at the construction developments of Saudi Arabia's The Line and Neom City. 
These mega projects were initially planned to be partially completed by 2020, but they're already behind schedule. They are currently dealing with high temperatures, a lack of water, and the energy impact of starting from scratch in a harsh environment. Not to mention that transporting the necessary resources to its location is a lengthy process that dramatically slows down construction. Telosa is aiming for a location similar to the line, which is out of reach and difficult to work with, making it almost certain that this mega project will face similar delays. So far, no land rights have been secured, leaving the question of where Telosa will be located unanswered. But that's not the only problem with the Southwest Desert being its location. A study published in the Nature Climate Change Journal in 2022 confirmed that the Southwest of the United States is at its driest in at least 1,200 years, while demand for water continues to rise. Water rights and availability are difficult to obtain when building a city in the desert, and many cities are already suffering as a result. Many residents in Arizona, for example, rely on groundwater or other techniques which are all expensive and unsustainable. So, how will Tolosa manage its water resources? The city claims it will capture and recycle water, which will then be stored in reservoirs throughout their parks. But this method does not guarantee a long-term water supply. Mark Lohr acknowledges that a viable water supply would require innovation, money, and political resolve, but he does not provide a strategy for dealing with this situation. One possible solution would be to relocate to a different location where water supplies are more widely accessible and cost-effective techniques are realistic. The Appalachian region would be a great alternative in terms of water supplies, however, you could argue that connectivity is even worse in that area. The third problem is something we also discussed in our Untold Secrets of the Line video. Telosa's mission is to create a new model for society, mainly by making sure their entire metropolis is sustainable in every aspect possible. That's why each roof will have solar panels and why all fossil fuel vehicles are banned. However, because there are no sustainable ways to build Telosa, the carbon footprint it will leave behind should be considered. What's the point of building a zero-carbon city if it produces 1 to 2 billion tons of CO2 in the first place? That defeats the project's primary goal, and a better alternative would be to invest in existing cities to make those more sustainable. Constructing Telosa would cost $400 billion in total. Imagine how much could be done to make existing cities more environmentally friendly with that same budget. Aside from all of this, one of the most severe problems must be our society's current perspective towards this mega project. 83% of American citizens currently live in cities, and the majority of these people would not consider relocating to Telosa at all. Telosa is very likely to face many expansion issues down the road, as the transition from 50,000 to 5 million citizens is quite challenging, especially since the vast majority of people criticize the plan describing it as a greenwashed Las Vegas or a Silicon Valley fantasy. Unless all of these sustainable megacities that are being constructed around the world really become our new way of living, it's very possible that these projects will never thrive as much as they are promoted to do. Then there's a problem that no one's talking about. Imagine one of your relatives has decided to relocate to Tolosa and you intend to visit the city. Because it's only a few hours away, you decide to drive there by car. But wait, you can't enter the city because your car isn't actually allowed there. This begs the intriguing question of whether Tolosa would even be connected to the American interstate network in the first place. There's also no mention of a nearby airport because it's obviously not carbon neutral, leaving Tolosa's connectivity to other cities a mystery. One possible scenario is that the only way to get into Tolosa is to use the high-speed public transportation network that connects to nearby cities. However, this would be very inconvenient for long-haul travelers, because you would always have to fly to a nearby city and take a train from there instead. Tolosa's connectivity will most likely be a problem until environmentally friendly airplanes are invented someday in the future. The Mucab, Saudi Arabia
Imagine constructing 20 Empire State Buildings next to each other at the same time. It might sound impossible, but that's what Saudi Arabia is building with the Mukab that's actually being funded as we speak. So, what is the Mukab? They're stating it will become the world's first immersive and experiential destination using virtual reality technology to change the world around you. Not only will this building be 400 meters tall, it will also be 400 meters wide and 400 meters long, making it truly gigantic. Coming in at this height, it would rank on number 41 in the world's tallest buildings list. And to really put its size into perspective, the Mukab could theoretically fit over 24 football fields inside of its walls. The outside of their walls are covered in gold with eccentric patterns inspired by the modern Naji architectural style, featuring a rooftop garden on top of it. It's planned to be situated in the northwest region of Riyadh as part of a larger development called the New Maraba District, which is scheduled to become the world's largest downtown area. When you enter the Mukab Cube, you'll be surrounded by a 360-degree holographic display, making it seem like you're in another world. Besides this newly invented technology, the trailer also shows many holograms around the precinct, as well as floating cars and hovering islands. Mukab's main feature will be a massive spiraling tower encased in a technological structure to create an immersive experience for all residents. The cube's roads will also feature its own internal transportation system, and just like the Line Mega project, it will be designed to offer living, working, and entertainment facilities within a 15-minute walking radius. A total of 104,000 residential units will be available, alongside many amenities such as a university, a multifunctional theater, and an iconic museum. With all this available space, Saudi Arabia claims it will be able to accommodate hundreds of thousands of citizens inside of their CUBE project, while also creating 300,000 jobs along the way. However, it's no surprise that the cube will come with an astounding price tag. According to Saudi's public investment fund, the Mukab will cost an estimated $48 billion, which is 5.7% of the country's GDP. Following the official statement issued by the Saudi Arabian government, the Cube Mega project is set to be completed by 2030. While the renders provided in the Mega Project's trailer might look promising, the Mukab has many problems that need to be resolved before it can ever become a reality. The first problem is the project's impossible time frame. As mentioned in their trailer, you could essentially fit 20 skyscrapers within the 400 meter tall cube. Usually, constructing just one skyscraper can take several years, let alone building a cube of that insane size. For comparison, let's select a 400 meter tall skyscraper that was recently completed, the Guiyang International Center in China. The structure began construction in 2016 and was completed in 2020. If we do the math, it would mean that the Mukab would take a total of 80 years to be finished, which is obviously a much longer time frame than the projected 7 years Saudi Arabia is aiming for. Not to mention that they're dealing with newly invented technology that is extremely complicated to construct, meaning it's simply unrealistic for the cube to be completed by 2030. The second problem is the project's funding. Saudi Arabia is currently constructing many other ambitious megaprojects besides the Mukab, such as the Line, Oxagon, and Trojina, which all contribute to the same goal of making Saudi Arabia less oil-dependent. While all of these megaprojects seem like great plans, the math doesn't really add up compared to the country's budget. All of these mega projects are funded by Saudi's Public Investment Fund, which is the fifth richest sovereign fund worldwide, having a total of $620 billion to their name. 
If we subtract this budget by how expensive all of these mega projects will be, we end up on a debt of $428 billion. Where is Saudi Arabia supposed to get this insane amount of funding from? If the country really wants to make all of these mega projects work, they have to be spread out over much longer time frames. But even then, the combination of all these mega projects happening at the same time seems far too ambitious. The third problem is the project's demand. Much like their linear city plan, the Mukab is centered around the concept of sustainability, offering a lifestyle with everything we need located within a 15-minute walking radius. And while Saudi Arabia is spending an insane amount of capital on both of these projects, their concepts are completely unproven, and the majority of our society seems to be uninterested in this type of lifestyle. While the line and the Mukab will offer a high amount of supply for this idea of living, when these projects are finished, demand for them will likely be far too low. Not to mention that both these projects essentially have the exact same concept, meaning their country is really doubling down on something that's uncertain to work. But another big problem is shown in the trailer. As mentioned earlier, there is an abundance of new technology to be seen within the 3D renders of the project, and some of it is simply unexplainable. For starters, a flying dragon can be seen, which to our knowledge doesn't exist yet. Or these rocks, that are just floating around without any form of purpose. What possible use could these have? And then there's the floating island which seems to have no way to get off of it. Are those people just stuck there? Plus, in the same shot, a forest of gigantic mushrooms can be seen in the background, which would be ridiculous to spend their budget on. Why is Saudi spending so much time on inventing pointless technology for this project? Instead of doing that, why not spend that same budget on their other ambitious mega projects? Like we proved earlier, they really need to start saving capital in some areas of these developments before the entire nation is headed towards bankruptcy. While the Lanier City is slowly breaking ground, it's currently unknown when the Mukab will begin construction, so only time will tell how Saudi Arabia will tackle these problems and whether or not the cube will ever become reality. Why the line in Saudi Arabia will fail Brand new footage has come out showing that the line is really being built. However, the mega project has nothing but negative attention, with most people stating it's simply impossible. But now that construction has officially kicked off, is the mega project going to become a new way of living? Or will it become a trillion dollar failure? The line was first revealed in July 2022 by Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi Crown Prince. This announcement sparked international interest, not only because it is the most insane mega project ever, but also because it introduces humanity to a new way of life. The prince is constructing a line that is 170 kilometers long, but only 200 meters wide. There will be no cars driving within the linear city, and everything will be within a five minute walking distance. It is intended to run entirely on renewable energy generated by wind and solar farms. Mohammed bin Salman hopes to attract 9 million residents to his line project, as well as creating 380,000 new jobs within it. Saudi Arabia truly believes it can change humanity's path to a way of life we have never seen. As a result of these enormous plans, the line has become the most viral mega project in history with nearly 50 million views on YouTube alone. But the trailers leave everyone with one question. Is this project really being built, or is it a clever way for Saudi Arabia to gain international attention? While everyone was talking about the line, there was no news on whether or not construction would actually begin. However, three months after the Crown Prince announced his plans, everything changed. On October 19, 2022, official drone footage of the construction site was released by Saudi Arabia, 
and what it shows is rather surprising. The foundation of the line is clearly visible in the video, with a large amount of machinery digging the shape for the mega project. This shot clearly shows that they've already gone a long distance, almost reaching the mountains in the background. And in this time lapse, you can see the hundreds of excavators required to lay the line's foundation. If we had to guess, the line is now about 6 to 10 miles long and heading straight for the mountains. By now, this footage is about 40 days old, meaning that the project is probably much longer already. However, many experts believe that the linear city will never look as futuristic as it does in the trailers. Because the line is something that humanity has never seen before, we can only speculate on what will happen. We believe there are five possible scenarios for the line's future. Scenario number one is that the line actually turns out like all of the trailers we've all seen by now. Saudi Arabia is making some incredible claims here, stating that they can build a project of this magnitude that has never been seen before. But perhaps if the country puts all of its resources into its ambitious plans, it will succeed. The scenario, however, appears to be quite unrealistic. Certain aspects of their master plan, such as having a car-free city or only using renewable energy, are certainly feasible. But when you consider the line's actual size, it's simply illogical to believe this project will succeed. The line would be 500 meters tall, roughly the same height as some of the skyscrapers on New York's Billionaire's Row. The linear city is essentially a 170 kilometer wide skyscraper, whereas a typical tower of that size is only 50 meters wide. Not to mention that they would have to build it twice parallel to each other, which would take far too long to construct, meaning the first scenario is unrealistic. However, the second scenario appears to be much more likely. Scenario number two is that the line's construction will be halted within the next few months or years, and that the project will be repurposed. For example, if only one mile of the line is built and the project is halted, it could still be used as a fantastic tourist attraction. Instead of housing and offices, you could fill the line with hotels and recreational activities like an amusement park or beaches. Saudi Arabia would retain its glory for constructing the line and people would be introduced to a new way of life. This scenario is much better than the entire project getting abandoned and never used again. Speaking of which, that is scenario number three. Imagine construction on the line gets halted when a miles-long project already exists. What is Saudi Arabia supposed to do with it? They only really have one option, leave it to rot. This seems to be a trend among mega projects located in the Middle East. What happened to the Jeddah Tower as well as to the Dubai Creek Tower is very likely to happen to the line as well. All of these construction projects have in common that they are very ambitious and something we have never seen before. If they can't even make these skyscraper projects work, how on earth will they make a project about 100 times as big succeed? However, this scenario seems less likely to become reality, since the line has received international attention, putting Saudi Arabia in the spotlight. If they fail to complete the project now, it will put the country to shame. Getting this mega project to completion is a phenomenal opportunity to get more tourists and investors to Saudi Arabia. But even if they don't make it happen entirely, there are still other scenarios that will save the project. That's the case for scenario number four. Because the line's massive scale appears unlikely to be built, what if the project is built on a smaller scale? We all know the line will be 170 kilometers long and 500 meters in height. But what if these dimensions changed? The city is divided into sections, each of which is only a five minute walk. Saudi Arabia could decide to stop construction after X number of sections making the project much shorter but still allowing it to exist. This is a better scenario than abandoning the project entirely or repurposing it. Another option would be to reduce the project's height. Even if they went with 50% of its original height, it would still be a tall mega project, roughly the same height as the Eiffel Tower. 
This would mean that fewer people will be able to move into the line, reducing the population from 9 million to 1.3 million. However, this wouldn't be that big of an issue, since Saudi Arabia could add more sections to the city if demand for it is high enough. But there's one more scenario we haven't considered yet. What if, as a result of all of the controversy surrounding the project, the line megacity gets cancelled? Since the project's announcement, a variety of issues have surfaced for Saudi Arabia to address. However, not everyone agrees on how Saudi Arabia is dealing with these issues. For example, several communities have to move out of their homes to make way for the mega project. And many Saudi Arabians who spoke out against the government's plans have been abducted by Saudi security forces. And when you consider all of the country's human rights issues, this no longer appears to be a good investment. Many commercial partners have already backed out of the deal on humanitarian grounds. And if many more would do this, the project would go bankrupt. The Gigantic Artificial Islands in Dubai Although Dubai might have the world's tallest building, the city's man-made artificial islands are more stunning than that. Palm Jumeirah, Deira Islands, Palm Jabal Ali, and the World Islands are all in different stages of completion. The Emir of Dubai and the Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates is the brains behind these massive mega-projects aimed at boosting tourism and expanding Dubai's coastline. So how does the construction of these artificial islands work? The process of dredging sand from the Persian and Arabian Gulf floors is known as land reclamation. GPS technology was used to precisely spray and vibrocompact the sand into the desired form. These islands were built to provide more coastal real estate, with Dubai being the most populated city in the United Arab Emirates. Demand for more housing is obviously high. Wealthy tourists frequently choose to stay in the city or purchase real estate there. In 2001, construction began on the Palm Islands. In order to build a crescent-shaped breakwater, crews used blasted mountain granite and divers to scan the seafloor. At its deepest point, the crescent of Palm Jumeirah stands a little more than 13 feet above low tide sea level and sits in 34 feet of water. The sand is covered by rocks and the structure is caped by two layers of larger rocks, weighing up to 6 tons each. The Palm Jumeirah is made up of 3.2 billion cubic feet of ocean sand that was vibrocompressed into place. Vibrocompaction involves saturating loose sand with water jets and vibrating it with probes to increase its density. Designers and contractors use differential global positioning systems to plot the palms and ensure the sand placement was within 0.39 of an inch to get the complex shape just right. During the construction of the islands, workers lived on the fronds and in anchored cruise ships. According to some experts, the islands are sinking into the sea. However, Nakiol seems to deny this. Environmentalists have also claimed that the island's construction has harmed the marine environment in the area. They say the project claims rocks and that the sand is buried over oyster beds and coral reefs. The Palm Jumeirah is currently crammed with villas, hotels and tourist attractions. Palm Jumeirah is home to around 80,000 people, with a capacity of 120,000. A six-lane subsea tunnel connects Palm Jumeirah to the mainland to facilitate tourism and make life easier for residents. The only public transportation option on the island is a monorail that runs the length of the palm. On the island, new resorts are still popping up everywhere, and developers are financing and building luxury apartments. In 2021, an observation deck on the 52nd floor of the Palm Tower opened, giving visitors a bird's eye view of the entire island. Despite the failures of other islands off the coast of Dubai, the Palm Jumeirah has become a popular destination for those seeking luxury. Let's take a closer look at the Palm Jebel Ali Islands. Construction of these islands started in 2002, but was put on hold in 2008 as a result of the financial crisis. Since then, Nakheel has reassured the media that Jabal Ali is still a long-term project and has not been cancelled. If and when the island is complete, it will be 50% larger than Palm Jumeirah and feature homes built on stilts, a water park, villas and six marinas. The breakwater for this project was completed in December 2006 and infrastructure work began in April 2007. 
Major construction of anything actually standing on the islands will not begin until most of the infrastructure work is completed. According to the original schedule, the first phase of the four theme parks would have already opened in 2021. But perhaps this project won't be halted for much longer. In September 2022, Nakheel announced a rebranding exercise for the Mega Project. Soon after this, it revealed its plan to relaunch Palm Jebel Ali. It was reported in the Wall Street Journal that many wealthy Russians were expected to move there. Nakheel is planning to build 1,700 villas and 6,000 apartments on the islands, and this has now been confirmed officially. Next to that is Pondera, which is the third Palm Island. This one will be eight times the size of Palm Jumeirah, and it was introduced in 2004. However, in 2013, Nakheel changed everything up and renamed the project to Deira Islands. In late 2018, the first large-scale selection of the Deira Islands opened. In this selection, the world's largest night market is located, with over 5,000 shops and almost 100 restaurants and cafes. It also has a massive mall that has a retractable roof and over 1,000 stores, which feels like you're walking around in paradise. This mall will serve as the centerpiece of Deira Islands Boulevard, which will feature retail space and at least 16 residential towers. Two of the four islands will hopefully be completed soon, with 250,000 people living on them. Unfortunately, ever since the crisis in 2008, little development has taken place on the islands. Very recently, in 2022, Nakheel rebranded the project to be named Dubai Islands. It is expected to house 80 hotels, and the project has been restarted. No official opening date has been announced just yet, but construction is underway once again. Next up are the World Islands, which is another mega project that Nakheel kicked off back in 2003. But this one is a lot different, since it consists of 300 small islands constructed into the world map form. However, this mega project is another victim of the 2008 financial crisis. The construction progress was halted until 2013, when only Greenland and Lebanon had been developed. Next to this issue, it's also claimed that the entire project is slowly sinking into the sea below. Despite these problems, developer Client Dance Group is hoping to revive the World Islands in a big way with the launch of the Heart of Europe. These are six client owned islands around the project, each providing visitors a slice of very high-end European lifestyles. It comes with underwater villas, five-star hotels, and even streets lined with manufactured snow. The St. Petersburg Island, which is shaped like a heart, promises to be the world's primary honeymoon destination. All of the islands are currently finished, however, not every island actually has buildings on it. This is because interest from investors is very low ever since the islands are sinking deeper and deeper into the water. Why on earth would you want to be on an island that is sinking? No work is being done to stop the islands from sinking, so maybe this project is doomed forever. And finally, let's talk about the Blue Waters. Giving Nakheel a run for its money is Maris Holdings, with its Blue Waters project that began construction in 2013. The dredging work was conducted by Van Oort, the Dutch firm that also worked on the Palm Jumeirah. Opening by late 2018 or early 2019, it has the largest Ferris wheel in the world, putting the London Eye to shame. Blue Waters is aiming to become Dubai's family-friendly tourism hotspot. The island will be broken into zones, featuring over 200 retail and dining options, 10 apartment complexes, and two hotels with prime beach access. The project was approved by Mohammed bin Rashid, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE. The biggest problems the MSG Sphere has in Las Vegas. First on the list is the budget. The Sphere's construction cost hit a staggering amount, going over budget multiple times. In a project of this magnitude, unforeseen construction challenges are somewhat expected. However, the MSG Sphere's uniquely futuristic design presented more than a few bumps along the road. From the mammoth task of constructing a perfect sphere to the intricate work of installing thousands of lead panels, the construction process was anything but straightforward. The design changes were another significant contributor to the budget overrun. As the sphere started to take shape, the vision for what it could be also evolved. New ideas and changes to the original plan were inevitable, but each modification came with a hefty price tag. Inflation too played its role in this budget saga. With the project spanning over several years, the cost of materials and labor steadily rose. 
This inflationary pressure added an unexpected burden on the budget, pushing it even further beyond its original estimate. With every dollar over budget, the pressure to generate revenue increases. It's a vicious cycle. The more it costs to build, the more it needs to earn to break even. The Sphere's initial revenue projections were ambitious, but with the budget skyrocketing, those projections now seem almost out of reach. This financial pressure also puts a strain on the relationships with investors. Each budget increase means asking for more money, which can cause tension and potential loss of faith in the project's viability. Next on our agenda, we dive into the tumultuous wave of traffic issues triggered by the Sphere's arrival in an area already teeming with life. We found that the strategists grossly miscalculated the Sphere's allure and its consequent magnetism. They conspicuously failed to predict the influx of visitors that would be irresistibly drawn towards the Sphere, amplifying the existing city traffic. Local businesses, too, have been negatively impacted as the constant traffic jams have deterred potential customers from venturing into the city's core. The city authorities, in response, have been scrambling to implement traffic management strategies. Yet, despite their best efforts, situation remains largely unresolved and the traffic gridlock persists. The long-term impact on the city's infrastructure is worrisome. This miscalculated oversight might not just have repercussions in terms of traffic management, but it could also threaten the Sphere's reputation and popularity. After all, who would willingly endure relentless traffic for hours just to participate in an event? This accessibility issue, if not rectified soon, could irreparably tarnish the Sphere's image and its future. The third problem on our list is the Sphere's sound pollution and its massive energy consumption. Imagine living next door to the loudest concert you have ever experienced. That's the reality for many residents and tourists staying near the MSG Sphere. The technology inside is awe-inspiring, a marvel of modern engineering. But it comes with a cost. The sound system in the Sphere is one of the most advanced in the world designed to create an immersive experience for every audience member by adding a speaker in every single seat within the dome. But this sound doesn't just stay within the walls of the sphere. It leaks out, seeping into the surrounding area, creating a constant hum of noise pollution. A symphony for some inside, but a cacophony for those outside. Now, onto the second part of the equation, the sphere's colossal energy consumption. Hosting events in such a technologically advanced venue doesn't come cheap. The Sphere's high-tech light and sound systems, not to mention its air conditioning and other utilities, require a significant amount of energy. This isn't just a drain on resources, it's a drain on the environment. The costs associated with this energy consumption are nothing to scoff at. It's a significant ongoing expense that further compounds the Sphere's already massive construction costs. It's not just about paying the bills, either. The Sphere, with its dazzling displays and booming sound system, is a beacon of modern entertainment. But is it also a beacon of environmental irresponsibility? The Sphere's design is innovative, cutting edge, but it's also problematic. The sound pollution is a nuisance for local residents, and the energy consumption raises questions about sustainability and financial viability. The fourth problem on our list is the Sphere's ability to generate enough revenue. Diving deeper into the financial enigma that is the Sphere, it's important to consider its potential income streams such as ticket sales, advertising, partnerships, and the leasing of the space for private events. The route to profitability, however, is laden with significant challenges. The Sphere is such a massive venue that needs an audience that can match the amount of seats it has to offer, and not all events can do this, given the over 17,000 seats that are available. The Sphere also has to grapple with towering operating expenses when no event is being held. Moreover, the Sphere is located in Las Vegas, a city already bustling with entertainment alternatives, which intensifies the competition it faces. It does house the most spectacular exterior the human eye has ever seen but the events within the venue largely remain the same. In this highly competitive environment, the Sphere must offer something unique and enticing to differentiate itself and draw in a consistent visitor base. The survival of the Sphere relies heavily on its ability to transform this conundrum into a concrete reality. The question remains, can the Sphere untangle this intricate financial riddle and emerge as a profitable venture? This mystery warrants further exploration.
We've dwelled on the challenges the MSG sphere faces, but let's now turn our gaze towards the potential solutions. To offset the astronomical construction costs, the sphere could explore innovative revenue streams. Beyond just hosting concerts and events, the sphere could become a hub for immersive experiences, such as virtual reality gaming, interactive art installations, and even educational programs. This could not only generate substantial revenue, but also position the sphere as a pioneer of experiential entertainment. As for the traffic turmoil, a comprehensive traffic management plan could be the key. This could involve collaborations with local transport services to streamline event logistics, or even incentives for carpooling and use of public transport. This approach would not only reduce the traffic load, but also contribute to environmental sustainability. The massive energy consumption of the sphere is another issue that cannot be ignored. However, this could be mitigated through energy-saving measures like the use of energy-efficient lighting and HVAC systems, and perhaps even exploring renewable energy sources like solar or wind power. In the end, the sphere's success hinges on its ability to navigate these challenges and adapt to the evolving landscape. It's a tall order, but with the right strategies and determination, it might just be possible. Jeddah Tower Massive Construction Update, Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia has finally restarted Jeddah Tower's construction. After over five years of this gigantic project being halted, it will soon get underway again. But what is the government's plan of attack? And how are they going to prevent another massive failure? Let's find out. Originally scheduled to be completed by 2020, the project has seen its progress slowed by a myriad of challenges that left it standing half-finished for over half a decade. The first hurdle to overcome was financial. As with any venture of this magnitude, securing sufficient funding was no small feat. The project was initially backed by the Saudi Arabian government and a consortium of private investors, but the economic headwinds of the past few years, including falling oil prices and regional economic instability, put a significant strain on the project's funding, but a much bigger issue was underway. The Jeddah Tower's primary investor, Saudi Arabian Prince Al Walid bin Talal, was embroiled in a corruption crackdown that saw him detained for nearly three months. His assets were frozen, and with it, the lifeblood of the Jeddah Tower's construction came to a halt. On top of that, the project was beset by logistical challenges. The sheer scale of the tower required innovative construction techniques. The searing heat of the Saudi Arabian desert, coupled with the proximity to the Red Sea, created a unique set of challenges that demanded ingenious solutions. So, what's the blueprint for this revival? Jeddah Tower's revised timeline is now set to see the tower's completion in the year 2028. This five-year plan is a carefully crafted strategy designed to ensure the project's success while overcoming the hurdles of the past. The backbone of this strategy is a three-pronged approach. First, the construction teams will focus on completing the tower's core, the heart of the structure, ensuring its stability. The second phase will see the completion of the tower's shell, the protective layer that will shield this architectural marvel from the elements. Finally, the third phase will be devoted to the interior, transforming the Jeddah Tower from a shell of steel and concrete into a living, breathing entity. And of course, the revised timeline includes buffers for potential delays, a pragmatic approach that acknowledges the unpredictability of such a mammoth undertaking. Having a thorough construction plan is one thing, but how is the government going to ensure that these type of delays never occur again? Part of the solution is to use innovative construction methods. In today's fast-paced world, using cutting-edge technology can be a game-changer. Think about building information modeling, prefab construction, and modular techniques. These methods can help you build faster, more efficiently, and with fewer delays. The project's developers can also keep a closer eye on their budget. Securing adequate funding and having a solid financial plan is crucial. Let's face it, construction projects can be expensive and sometimes unpredictable. Having a financial cushion can save your project from grinding to a halt due to budget constraints. But these budget errors are sometimes inevitable. What's much more important is to have proper risk management. Construction projects are full of surprises, and that's why you need a solid plan for when things go south. 
Identify potential issues early. Allocate resources for unexpected delays and establish clear protocols for decision making. And lastly, a key element to making the Jeddah Tower work is stakeholder communication. It's not just about bricks and steel, it's also about people. Keep the lines of communication open with investors, contractors, and the public. Regular updates and progress reports build trust and help manage expectations. Jeddah Tower will have a staggering effect on Saudi Arabia in many different ways, blasting the country into global attention. The project, with its mesmerizing height and innovative design, is set to draw in millions of curious tourists from every corner of the globe. This influx of visitors will not only bring an economic boost through tourism revenue, but also open doors for cultural exchange, fostering a global appreciation for Saudi Arabia's rich heritage and its strides in modernization. Besides this, the construction and subsequent operation of the Jeddah Tower will also create a plethora of job opportunities. From engineers to architects, from construction workers to service staff, there are workers needed on all 252 stories of the building, generating a living for many Saudi Arabians. This will significantly contribute to the country's economy and help in reducing the unemployment rate. Lastly, the Jeddah Tower plays a critical role in Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 plan. This plan seeks to diversify the country's economy and reduce its dependence on oil. By attracting investment, creating jobs, and boosting tourism, the Jeddah Tower will be a key player in achieving this vision. In the grand scheme of things, the Jeddah Tower is more than just a building. It is a symbol of progress, a catalyst for economic growth, and a beacon of hope for a prosperous future. The Untold Secrets of the Line, Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia is currently building the most impressive and insane mega project humanity has ever witnessed. From the total cost being $1 trillion to all the negative backlash the project has had, these are all the untold details of the line. On the 10th of January 2021, plans for the line mega project were announced by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in a presentation that was broadcasted on state television. The prince wants to build a 170 kilometer long linear city that's only 200 meters wide and 500 meters above sea level. This linear city will have no roads, no cars, and no emissions. It's aiming to run on 100% renewable energy and 95% of the project will be preserved for nature. The priority of the project is people's health and well-being rather than focusing on transportation and infrastructure. The line will eventually have 9 million residents in Saudi Arabia claims it will create 380,000 jobs within the linear city. The climate within the city will always be ideal for residents since this can be artificially adjusted for the entire line. If you would live inside the line, everything you need would be within a 5-minute walking distance and you can travel from one end of the line to the other within only 20 minutes on the brand new high-speed rail network. This mega project is absolutely insane and it seems quite unrealistic to achieve. Nobody has construction plans as ambitious as Saudi Arabia. Can they really make it happen or are they just trying to get worldwide attention? In 2016, Saudi Arabia announced Vision 2030, a huge plan that reduces the country's dependence on oil and turns the economy around to focus more on technology, tourism and other sectors. Ever since this announcement, they've also revealed a master plan called NEOM, meaning New Future. NEOM will be a large futuristic smart city and it currently consists of three massive mega projects. The first part of construction is a floating industrial complex called the Oxagon, which is a massive port for shipping routes throughout the Red Sea. Besides that, it will also have another crazy mega project in the city. The project is called Trojena and it's a major outdoor skiing location where entertainment and events should take place. But none of these projects even come close to how insane the plans are for the line linear city. More and more details are being revealed about the construction plans for the project and it gets more and more insane after every announcement. So how does the construction of the line work? The linear city will be made out of two 500 meter high skyscrapers that run parallel to each other with just 200 meters in between them. The outside of the building will be entirely made out of mirrors, making it look absolutely stunning. 
The line will start at the coast of the Gulf of Aqaba in the Red Sea and go into the country, cutting straight through multiple mountains and deserts. The two mirrored buildings will be connected with several walkways high up in the sky. The inside of the project will contain every single facility that humans need. From public parks and multiple office spaces to millions of homes and any store you can imagine. All of this will be built vertically, so all infrastructure within the line is on top of each other. Adding to that, the insane mega project will also have a marina for yachts and sports stadium built up to 305 meters above the ground. But is the line even realistically possible, or will it ever be built? The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia calls the line a revolution in civilization. However, many people believe the project seems more like a massive fantasy world coming straight out of a fiction movie. Saudi Arabia wants to construct parts of the project by 2030 and already have more than 10 million residents moving in straight away. While civilization has built some of the most insane mega projects we've ever seen in very difficult landscapes, the linear city might promise too much in such a short amount of time. Saudi Arabia isn't very well known for finishing the mega projects they started building. For instance, the Jeddah Tower that was going to be the tallest skyscraper around the globe is still on hold until this day, and it only reached one third of the height it was supposed to reach. The line is unlike any other mega project we've ever seen, but is it actually getting constructed or is the project going to be a 3D render forever? Luckily, I can tell you that the mega project recently began construction. Here you can see the insanely long line in the middle of the desert. They are currently trying to draw the 170 km line all the way, making sure the terrain will hold the insanely large project. But this is obviously only the beginning, and there is so much construction work that has to be done to make this ambitious concept a reality. The entire world is watching Saudi Arabia and their crazy plans. Close to 50 million people have already seen the trailer of the line linear city, but why on earth would Saudi Arabia risk their entire reputation like this? just to construct an extraordinary mega project. Ever since Muhammad bin Salman took over the country's projects, Saudi Arabia has gone on a massive mission to rebuild their own image. Projects like the line are a huge part of this rebranding and are a guarantee of a lot of exposure and international attention. Saudi Arabia wants to be recognized as a country that has a lot to offer. They want to shift their economy towards tourism and attract more international residents to their country. With incredible headlines like the Linear City Project, they aim to be looked at from a different perspective within the international community. Neom is supposed to become Saudi Arabia's own landmark, and announcing such an unbelievable project in the middle of it will for sure build anticipation. The project can also be seen as a research project for a new wave of city structures and various modern transportation concepts. Saudi Arabia has surely managed to gain a lot of exposure with the announcement of the Neom City and all the projects within it. But most of this exposure has been very negative. A lot of questions surrounding the Lion Project are left unanswered. The goal is to build a mega city with a 100% sustainable transport system and zero emissions. But Saudi Arabia never mentioned the massive carbon footprint that constructing something as large as this will leave behind. According to multiple experts, building the line would emit close to 2 billion tons of CO2, which is around 4 years of all CO2 emissions in the United Kingdom. When you add this to the equation, the promise of constructing a carbon-neutral city doesn't sound too convincing anymore. But if you thought this was the only problem, wait until you hear about many of the other issues. Because on top of that, Critics have been quick to point out Saudi Arabia's human rights record and are already calculating the human cost of their plans. According to experts, there are around 20,000 people that have to make room for Neom by moving out of their very own homes. Human rights have become a very hot topic now and will create setbacks while raising the funds for the trillion dollar mega project. The financial planners of the line had hoped to raise capital mainly coming from Western investors but these investors are currently not interested whatsoever. There have been some economic partnerships, but the negotiations for these were rough. And even if they get all of the funds together, some of the plans for Neom and the Linear City project are just way too complicated to ever turn into reality. 
Many experts believe that the final result of the line will look a lot different compared to all the fancy renders that have been made by Saudi Arabia. Based on past construction projects that have completed or failed to complete, Saudi simply doesn't have the expertise necessary to turn this concept into a real construction project. For the line project, another important question to ask is whether residents would actually be interested to live in such a weird city. Sure, some people will be interested at the start, but is it actually nice to live there in the long run? Realistically, the project is massively overscaled and faces many problems, like the earlier mentioned human rights abuses. It remains a very trending question. Will the line actually succeed? Only time will tell. And I will make sure to keep you posted on the construction process. The Marvelous Endeavor of Constructing the City of Dubai Over the last 70 years, Dubai has had the transformation of the century. But how did they go from a completely empty desert to the mega city we know today? And what does the future of Dubai hold? This is the evolution of Dubai. First, we have to go all the way back to the year 1822. Back then, Dubai was just a simple fishing village formed by the Bani Yas tribe. Over the following decades, the village started looking more and more like a small town. In 1902, it was mainly being used as a port for international trading of cargo. By the beginning of the 20th century, Dubai was a very important trading location, because of its location being very close to Iran. By 1920, many Iranians started living in Dubai permanently. But Dubai's future took a crazy turn when this happened. The government of Dubai discovered all the oil that was right below their feet. So in 1937, an oil exploration contract was signed, which made sure that Dubai owned all the royalty rights to the oil. Dubai's ruler at the time, Sheikh Rasbid, started using the revenue from trading oil to build infrastructure for the small town. More and more private companies started popping up to build and operate the infrastructure, such as electricity and the newly constructed airport. In 1959, Dubai's first ever hotel was built, the Airlines Hotel. After constructing a few buildings, Sheikh Rasbid hired a British architecture firm to create the first master plan Dubai ever had. The British firm was planning to construct an extensive road network alongside organized zones and a town center. During this time, Dubai continued to grow from the revenue generated from oil and trading. In the 1990s, many businesses from other cities such as Kuwait and Bahrain decided to move to Dubai. Their economy kept on growing and so did the city itself. But this is just the beginning of Dubai's insane transformation. Because Dubai was about to start construction on some of their famous projects that are globally recognized today. In 1999, construction on the Burj Al Arab began, which is one of the most luxurious hotels in the world. It's constructed on an artificial island that is connected to Jumeirah Beach by a private curving bridge. It's a seven-star hotel, and it costs around $24,000 to stay at for a single night. Besides that, construction on the Palm Jumeirah started in 2001. This project is part of a larger development called the Palm Islands, which are a large group of artificially made islands. The project increases Dubai's shoreline by a total of 320 miles, and it has an estimated population of 10,000 residents. But these mega projects are nothing compared to the world-famous Burj Khalifa that began construction in 2004. The massive tower holds the title of the tallest structure and building at the time of making this video. With a height of 2,722 feet, or just over half a mile, nobody has been able to compete with Dubai's impressive construction project. Because Dubai constructed so many world-famous projects, they got a lot of international attention, making them a popular location to move to. Between 1960 and 2021, the population in Dubai has multiplied 80 times, going all the way from 40,000 residents to 3.5 million residents. Dubai has a lot of trending locations that are globally well known, but how much have these popular locations changed over the last 50 years? Back in 1954, this is what Dubai's waterfront looked like. There were only a few boats laying around, and there was not a single skyscraper to be seen. In 2007, construction started to transform this waterfront forever. Nowadays, it's a 5-mile-long waterfront that runs parallel to the Persian coastline with a ton of insanely tall skyscrapers surrounding it. The transformation of the airport is also quite insane. It was built in 1959, and back then it only had a runway built out of compacted sand. 
Only years later, an asphalt runway and a fire station were added to the airport premises. But nowadays, it's one of the biggest and busiest airports around the globe. In 2017, the airport welcomed a total of 88 million passengers and handled 2.65 million tons of cargo. But the transformation of the main highway running through Dubai is even more stunning. The Sheikh Zayed Road was constructed in the 1970s as a tiny one-lane road handling the same amount of traffic at that time. As Dubai grew more and more into a massive city, so did this road. It grew from a simple road to a massive primary highway linking Dubai and Abu Dhabi, as well as contributing to Dubai's massive road network. It is the longest road in the Emirates and it takes you on a crazy trip alongside the skyline of downtown Dubai. You can see the Emirates Towers, Palm Jumeirah, and the Dubai Marina. Speaking of downtown Dubai, this might be the most insane transformation of them all. Downtown Dubai only had a few tall buildings in the year 2000. But I wouldn't call them skyscrapers just yet. Most of the area was filled up with some tiny buildings and empty desert landscape. In the year 2006, about a quarter of the cranes worldwide were occupied in building the massive structures we see in Dubai today. Nowadays, downtown Dubai is absolutely filled up with some of the biggest skyscrapers in the world, promising an astonishing view. The growth of this metropolis is absolutely crazy, but what does the future of Dubai hold? The government of Dubai has a master plan for the city that is supposed to be a reality by 2040. The main goal with this plan is to stimulate sustainable urban development. It focuses on enhancing people's happiness, quality of life, and it makes sure that Dubai is a great global destination for travelers. The master plan states that the government wants to upgrade Dubai's urban areas, such as downtown, Dubai Marina, and the Business Bay. They also want to build two new centers, the Expo 2020 Center and Dubai Silicon Oasis Center. By 2040, Dubai wants to double all green and recreational spaces within the city, as well as increasing land area for hotels and tourist activities. They're also looking to encourage mass transit use, such as walking, cycling, or any other means of flexible transportation. To summarize, Dubai wants to be a lot more sustainable by 2040. But besides these plans, they are also working on massive mega projects that are going to shock everyone. Such as a huge skyscraper called the Wanza Zabil. This twin tower project is currently under construction and is expected to be completed before the end of 2022. The first tower will be more than 980 feet tall. Both towers will be connected with an impressive panoramic sky cantilever suspended 330 feet above the ground. It will be the world's longest cantilever and will feature a number of facilities inside, such as restaurants and entertainment. But the mega project that is much taller, the Dubai Creek Tower. This huge tower would surpass the height of the Burj Khalifa if it actually gets constructed. The total cost of the tower will come down to around $1 billion. It was expected to already be finished in 2022, but the completion date is currently unknown since the tower is currently on hold while the actual height of the project was never truly disclosed. The developer talks about a minimum height of 4,300 feet. This is about three and a half times higher than the Empire State Building in New York. The architects of the project are keeping the actual height a secret, so not a single competitor such as the Jeddah Tower can plan ahead and build a higher tower. The Dubai Creek Tower will have 10 of the world's highest observation decks that will give panoramic views of Dubai. It will also have balconies that rotate, peaking on the outside of the tower. There will be two garden decks on the inside of the tower since this stimulates their further plans towards sustainability and adding more green to the city. Construction on the tower started back in 2016, but at this moment, no work is being done to continue working on the tower. The completion date is likely to be pushed back by a few years, possibly finishing between 2024 to 2030. Dubai is already known for having the most insane construction projects around the globe, but they are always trying to stay ahead of the competition, and they are always trying to innovate. Dubai will be around for many more decades, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for all of us.